<laughs> hey, Gary. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, get this shit off my face. <laughs> That's better. That's better. That's better. I don't, know, I don't know what to think of that. I don't want to. I don't want to think about that either, to be honest. I, think I broke those sunglasses now, but that's okay. Oh, good. Dude. Fuck them. They're already broken to begin with. Motherfucker. <laughs> you motherfucker. So that's my little intro bit for the day, because I have nothing else. To do. <laughs> Fuck it. But anyways, are you just sniffing yourself? Huh? Were you just sniffing yourself? Sniff myself. It's. It looks like you were for a second. Mm. Myself. I don't even know what to say to that. To be honest, I smell like macaroni and cheese. It's like I not even going to ask about that. Yeah, yeah, neither. Well, I got some mac and cheese right here. Want some? I do. No, especially after you just said that you smelled like it. <laughs> well, you know, what? Gary, I'd like some. Don't talk with your mouth full. Why? Because it's rude. Listen to shit. Yeah, it's hundred cent to hear what come in your mouth. I'll be right back. Hang on. <laughs> what Wait. the hell did you just say? That's what I'm wondering. It tastes like gloop glop. Whoop whoop. That's what that's what you literally said. Gloop glop. <laughs> say it again. Gloopy gloopy gloop. Wait, what did you want? You want some gray poupon? It tastes like gloopy gloopy gloop. Gloopy. <laughs> hey, that's ain't my gloopy, fault. Gloopy gloopy gloop. Gloopy Hippity gloppy hoppy, blue. Hoop. You know, I really return back at like one of the more interesting times. <laughs> this being one of them. Well, I'm saying gloopy gloopy gloop. Why? Because that's what the macaroni and cheese tastes like. It represents his stomach. <laughs> no, stop, no, the stomach's... <laughs> Whatever, fuck it. No, it sounds more like... It's like... It's like... <laughs> All of a sudden, you got a fucking pass win and shit like that, and it's like... Yeah, you uh, passed him when You were speaking to the professor. <laughs> You know why he's eating his mac and cheese? Because someone else made it for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you, you going to show you my old man's a bad cook? No. No, you didn't make it. That's why it's turned out. <laughs> you dumb shit. <laughs> I didn't say it. Exactly. Speaking of things, I think I might bring a little series to, well, not like a big series, but like a movie. Colin, I can talk about some culinary horror stories from my days when I was in culinary school. Oh, yes, please. Oh, so that's every day then. Yeah, and you can see how the origins of me burning stuff started. The blueberry pie, for example. Oh, God. Long story short, it was culinary. It was around Thanksgiving. We were signed to make homemade pies. Everyone was draw had to draw flavor out of the hat or whatever the fuck it was, like a little pail. In each, fl in each pie flavor was different. You had raspberry, cherry, blueberry, mango, peach, apple, you name it. So there was different ones. So there was a couple of them where people had to make the same type of flavor but different styles. I had blueberry pie. So I had the crust all made. I had the filling all properly constructed. I put it in the pie. I had it. It looked very be It looked beautiful. The pie looked beautiful and for all of a sudden, this is where I fucked up. I put the pie in the oven. Mm -hmm. I set it at the wrong time. It was at the proper temperature, but it, I set it at the wrong time. Ah, oh, deja vu. Now, how long does a pie usually take? Now, what? Maybe about eight, ten minutes? It doesn't oh. take 20, uh, 27. Yeah, then that's what happened. <laughs> I set the pie for about 27 minutes, and guess what happened? The motherfucker burned, and I failed that exam. So... The fucking pie, the fucking pie itself, the filling was purple goo. 
It was nothing more. It went from blue to purple goo in an instant. It was nothing more but mush that was un, that was absolutely unsatisfying. And that led the sequel to Ghostbusters. Oh my god. Yeah. Better, yeah, you wanna know what they you wanna know what they did with that purple goo? They took that purple goo as inspiration for the shit you walk in Doom Eternal. So there you go. Well, I was gonna say <laughs> Ghostbusters, more like shit busters. Oh, and, I, and I actually did not mind that reboot. <laughs> God damn it. Shit busters, yeah, that's what happens when a plumber shows up in Gary's house. <laughs> actually, I do the plumbing around the house because nobody touches my toilet but me. <laughs> Who yeah, you? Like, because yeah, Gary, you want to know why? Because no one wants to touch it. Story <laughs> <laughs> where I had, a, I had a relative come over and use my toilet, and guess what happened? Never went back to use it again. I wonder why. <laughs> say, let's just say when I have to take a shit, I'm in there for quite a while. You no, should. Oh, you don't say you're in there fucking yeah, making uh-huh. biscuits. Trano, you can attest to that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, point. My name is Elsie Poopy Pants Bologna. Tis dinner plate nipple, motherfucker. I was already talking about that with a co worker of mine Dude, about that, saying. and I was telling him about the time I was about to fucking strangle you. Oh, because I. Because <laughs> he nearly <laughs> broke his toilet. Well, not, 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 not just that, really. It was the fact that he was in there for what felt like half an hour. Probably more like. <laughs> the fuck? Who are you? Yokozuna? It was probably in there for like I think fifteen minutes or something. Oh my god! And he came as he came out. He just looked at me with that stupid shitting grin. And at that point, he didn't say a damn word. So I'm like, Gary, did you break the toilet? And he just stared at me. I'm like, Gary, if I find that toilet is fucking broken, I'm going to end you. <laughs> I mean, you know what? You know what? This is why I would have been, since we're in Vegas, you know what? You better mm. go out in the desert and dig a hole and shit, or else I'm going to dig a whole separate hole for a different reason. <laughs> Shane, it, it's, it's like that video where the guy yells at the cat. He's like, I will end you! <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> what happened was, there was brown stains at the bottom of the toilet. They didn't have one of those brushes to scrub Jesus it out. Jesus Christ, get out to go that to tell us about the shit! It's a good thing I took my headphones off for a second because I had to. Because <laughs> I had to, uh, I have to use my headphones as a headband. Because count yourself got... lucky, dude. Yeah, I had to. I had to use my uh, headphones as a headband because my hair has gotten so damn long. That's okay, because you know what? This is karma for him. Hey, Gary, you know, you know, your shit in the toilet and your love life has something to comment. They're both lonely. <laughs> oh, that was just. That's mean. what you for disgusting me. That was disgusting. That's what you get. Wow. Gary, I'm sorry. Fucking mute me. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry too that your shit has better chances. Jesus. <laughs> Rome, we've been over. Gary, here. once again, I apologize on behalf no, of Rome. this is what you. This is what you get from last night. From you last know, night. Oh, oh. Um. I can tell people about your secret. I can tell people about your name. Go your ahead. Name. Secret name? Chubby Cupcake. Secret. That's right. <laughs> what? That's, that's right. Chubby Chub- Cupcakes. Chubby, Ex- chubby, 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 chubby cupcakes. Excuse me? Yeah. Yeah. Hashtag Chubby Cupcakes. Chubby okay. Cupcakes. It has, to do with, it has to do with Romy's mom. That, that's And basically. Oh, oh my god. god. Motherfucker yeah. and his mother were arguing like usual, and what happened was his mother called him a chubby, chubby. Uh, what was that? A uh, hippo or? It's, it's, it's like it's like some chubby something. I forgot what it was. She I said think, chubby like, chubba chuba or some no, shit. Like, I forgot. Like, fuck, fuck an animal. You <laughs> your mom. <laughs> walrus or something. I don't know. And I fucking said after, walrus. I fucking said chubby cupcakes afterwards. So. I was eating a cupcake that night too. Oh, and Romy was just like, "Would you shut the fuck up?" <laughs> and it stayed ever since. Oh, it's hilarious! What? what the fuck, guys? <laughs> Let's just. It was shit. funny. Shit happens, you know. It happens for a reason. Uh huh. That <laughs> <laughs> was a shit happens. So that's that. But anyway, Gary, so- Gary the Oi, I am the Walrus. Can you say that, Gary? I am the walrus. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cachoo, you stupid people. 
I am the wall. That's one of my favorite Beatles songs. <laughs> Listen, okay, Drum's mom calling him chubby. That makes sense. It's Lars go, what the fuck? <laughs> boom! Look at these. Boom! Look at these big arms. Yeah, you got it. By the way, interesting, uh, interesting smoking, smoking to I am the walrus. Very interesting experience. Um, you're doing your fucking way. You're just as bad as <laughs> some chick I know who's fucking bad with alcohol. Well, oh, come I, on, Alex. Huh? What? A fucking McPickle. <laughs> I don't a know. pickle. A pickle. A pickle. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, a huh. fucking pickle. Actually, I'm not the strongest man in the world. I saw this video. Oh my god, this massive motherfucker set a new deadlift work record. He how, deadlifted how a little over 1,100 pounds. Uh, uh, how size this dude? He was like massive. Well, that's like bigger than Bane massive? Oh, fuck it. He takes shits bigger than Bane. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god! I, I, I uh, retweeted on my Twitter. I was just like, "Son of a bitch!" It was the mountain for Game of Thrones. I wouldn't be surprised if it was. <laughs> that 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 dude is huge, to say the least. I, it might have been actually. <laughs> uh, wait, wait. Was it Doom Eternal delay so they can make Doom guys' muscles look better? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised either. Austin, Austin, to talk about when it comes to Doom Eternal. Uh, there might be a different reason for that. We'll get to the, wait. What happened here? Oh, Psycho Mike! Now you show up. Oh Jesus Christ! Looks like hey, Alexander what? beats you with the pickles. Hey, wait, Pickle. wait. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had a respiratory issue. <laughs> What? Take care of that. Drink some cough syrup or something. Cough syrup. Take care of that shit. Anna would care. I'm not sick. <laughs> well, that's disgusting, but that's on another level. <laughs> you want to fight? I'll you fight you. Yeah. I'll kick your you ass. Fight? Shit. I don't hit retards. You want to fight? You want to Fight! You know no. why? Because we have retard strength and big dicks. I do not hit children. I fight men. You're a man? Yeah, I am a man. Well, yeah, he looks like one. He's aging he's like a cat. He's a man. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. Look at him. He's aging like a cat. <laughs> I'm just, and now you're a man. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. The guy who's like 6'8", six, 6'8". Six, he's like a legit real Viking. <laughs> that's why cats are older are much more wiser, too. So there you go. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen... But the wise. they good grammar. So you're a wise guy. <laughs> you're a I wise hate, guy, eh? And I hate everybody equally. That's not a surprise. Oh. But I love you. Yes, I don't have any nuts. It turned into peanut butter, so there you go. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, Grease I one and Can I do my fucking intro without any interruptions? No. Yes. <laughs> oh, don't you walk away uh, from me. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, hey. there's the timeout quarter. So I'll take hey, Romy, really quick. Alex just sent me a picture of what he sent to you at the fuck at the, the big pickle. That thing looks nasty. <laughs> to be fair, I hate pickles myself. So fucking disgusting. That's hilarious. It looks disgusting, but <laughs> strike. <laughs> strike. <laughs> keep out. going. Keep going. <laughs> oh, okay. We don't have to look again anymore. Yay! Oh. Gary, you, would, you just went from the Mona Lisa to a modern art piece of shit. <laughs> oh, that... Shut up, dude. <laughs> Go ahead, Gary, as you, know. you were. Go on. Anyway. Someone's upset. Greetings? Mm -hmm. Yup! <laughs> You're such a dickhead. <laughs> You're such a dickhead. Greetings, one and all. Welcome back to another episode of this book. <laughs> Great fun all, welcome back to another episode of this weekly program that you see here on the page for you all every single Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 4 p.m. Central, and uh, 2 p.m. Pacific. 
me at a time. This is the both us program bullshit that people just join and watch to make your Mondays a little bit better. <laughs> now I can. <laughs> Shade's trying to contain his laughter. It's so hard. <laughs> boobies. I got my intro Share the boobies. I got my intro done. That's all I give a shit about. Take us away, Rumi. <laughs> <sighs> Remember that the other night I was talking to Gary and I said I had a mean joke I could say about him? Oh, yeah, that, I remember that. I remember. I, I will take you off and... and you can and, beat me off instead. <laughs> you're not saying it. I'm not Ew. Going to... uh, no. I, I, was, I was like, I'm going to beat your dick off. I was like, you want to beat my dick? I'll, I'll, I'll use both my hands if I have to. <laughs> I want to get through the program without getting upset. I, um... Oh. I think it's a little too late for that. I was about to say. <laughs> Wait. You okay there, Boo Boo? Uh, knock, knock. And you tell Who's me I'm there? disgusting for burping. <laughs> but it burns though every time I burp. <laughs> oh, caught. <laughs> oh no. You know they say if it burns, it's working. You know you should probably get that checked out, Gary. Just saying. Yeah, put some menthol on it. <laughs> Gary, I didn't mean to. I, I forgot to warn you. It was all consent. Put some hamburger helper. <laughs> oh, you, you. I'm going to say that bad joke to him. You ready? Yeah. Well, the poor boy's puking. Come on. I'll fuck him. He'll get old. <laughs> Just walk it off. If he, if he, if he get hurt, hurt him back. If he killed, walk it off. <laughs> Gary. Oh, oh God! He wasn't he's having an episode right now? Oh, this is so bad. I was literally choking. <laughs> he's got yeah, your as a tomato, man. No, he was choking the chicken more like it. Oh, for God's sakes! I'm hey, Gary. <laughs> he was choke. He was actually choking right there. Okay, Gary. I'm not talking about that. I'm I was literally choking. Relax, breathe. breathe. Do the do you like those uh those cough drop medicines? Breathe, my friend. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> Ricola. <laughs> I, I don't think it was Ricola. It was uh... no, I know, but it's in the same vein. <laughs> okay, hey Gary. No, I can't. Hey Gary. <laughs> okay. I'm fucking choking real bad. You're okay Whenever... though. <sighs> you when, like... I, when I st when I stare at you, it reminds me of a dog pissing in the same area in the grass over and over. Ow! That shit's cruel, dude. <laughs> that was mean. Not thought getting it bleached was bad. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say anything to that. No comment. <laughs> but anyway, no, it's very rude to interrupt me during my intro. I don't interrupt you during your intro. He doesn't. Yeah. Fucking hell. It's called being respectful. Okay, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be. And fix your feedback. It's called being respectful, which is something that I actually do happen to have. He is. So that's that. But anyways, folks, in terms of what we're going to be presenting to the table, majority of the shit that I'm sure we all got is gaming topics. So kind of that's what we all have. Yeah. Uh huh. So that's a good thing. So it is a video game episode of both us. Which is a good thing, actually, because I like that. But anyways, folks, yeah. in terms of that. I got a couple things I'm going to talk about. We're going to start off the show momentarily going over a particular rant about something that's been talked about quite a lot, personally. talked a lot. Yeah. So we're going to go over that. Oh, I'm gonna... oh boy. I'm going to keep an eye on the fucking chat for this one. Please, please. I'm going to go over a little more detail about WWE 2K Battlegrounds later on. Oh, yeah. no, that's not the one. <laughs> so bad. Austin and I are going to be discussing a little bit about The Last of Us. There will be, rev by the way, to which everyone, there will be a review of part one coming out. I want to say, I'm actually going to release it the day before the game comes out, part two comes out. I'm just going to say just right now, if they're going to bring up what I think it's going to bring up, if I see any fucking bullshit in the chat, I'm going to boot your ass. Guys, we're not even joking. I'm not joking. Any, either. any BS about part two or anything, uh -huh. do not even dare say it. Seriously. I swear to God, I will fucking boot you for good. Don't even bullshit me. Anyways, moving on from that. As you were. <laughs> but afterwards, um, if you're probably wondering what, what all this is here, 
I'm gonna go over all my cereal boxes later on. So I'm yeah, not Gary, gonna Gary's gonna build a clubhouse. <laughs> I already did right here. So I'm not gonna be going first this time. I'm gonna let other people talk do their shit. All right. So all right, so guys, I just wanna say thank you all once again for joining episode. Oh wait, there's a little bit of feedback anyways. So thank you all for joining this I wanna say this video game edition of Bofas. Uh yes, there are no movie topics, surprisingly. Um but in terms of the topics I have, this is what I have to offer for you guys today. I played and beat Spec Ops The Line last night, uh, which, by the way, I understand the appeal for it. I will get into my review. I'm going to also do my own video because I have to talk about it. I'm going to talk about the controversy surrounding the Doom Eternal soundtrack. That is fucking... That, it, that is just... Oh. It breaks my heart knowing what Same. happened, to say the least. Um, Thanks to Giuseppe. He's the one that sent uh, us the article. I also have Game Ranks as top ten video game sequels, which were which were terrible. And I also have also Gary and I will be going into a little bit of The Last of Us and just a tiny bit of Last of Us Part Two because, like I said, we're gonna do a full in depth discussion on Part One, which we're gonna record soon. But I'm not gonna upload the video for a couple of weeks. But yeah, that's what I have to offer. Uh huh. Shane. Huh? Huh? <laughs> 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 like Steve Harvey going, huh? <laughs> Pork, you pine, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you, usually I go a little bit last, but I mean, I got, um, I don't know, I got a whole thing about not judging a book by its cover when it comes to uh, games and whatnot. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah, and. Actually, one thing that's unrelated to um, games, uh, a little uh, something at the end for you guys, a little positivity for your day to go ahead and get your week started off right. Yeah. Well, well, I don't know if that's a good idea when I have to go do a blood test and think positive. Oh, I was, I was about to say, in, wow. in terms of, speaking of office space, I think someone's got a case of the Mondays. I was like, does everyone, someone, does anyone ever tell you got a case of the Mondays? Nah, man. No, man. Shit, no, man. I'm going to get your ass kicked for so saying something good. like that. That was like an early Jennifer Aniston movie. That you know? That's one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in Office oh, Space. It's, it's, it, yeah, like I said, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Mike Judge is like a hit or miss with me. When he hits, oh, he hits one. Beavis and Butthead specifically, oh my Beavis god. Beavis and Butthead. Yep. Love Beavis and Butthead. Dude, two episodes came on on my birthday years back when they did the revival. When they did the revival season. That was great. But uh, anyways. <sighs> Romy? Sorry, I was playing my balls. <laughs> balls Thanks of steel. <laughs> balls of steel. steel. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 120. You all know, and everybody knows that as the Bofas on the sofas. Introducing the young yes, Mr. Garrison. Yucky. <laughs> yeah, it's called taking a shower, Gary. <laughs> Oh God! You stinky, winky, dinky. Jose looks like he could use a shower. <laughs> I actually took a shower earlier. At a point. I take a shower all the time. Yes, that is correct. Uh, dark side of the moon. And see, Cougar, you be quiet. I know he's gonna say something. And then you have Austin the Tripod Partner. Hey guys, Austin here. Quick, why are you getting in my ears? Because I can. Like Please. I'll no stop. Consent. I'll stop. Get, get, Shane, I'll stop for your sake. <laughs> no consent. I, I got, I got uh, two words for you. Restraining order. I was, I was about to say, Shane, I'll do so for your sake. I'll stop for your sake. No, they uh, are. The Wall, I think, is the greatest album of all time. And then we have... Por de Español, por favor, presione uno. I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> I live in Arizona. I know exactly what it means. <laughs> so I took tears of Spanish. I don't remember jack shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, si es muy bueno. <laughs> and yours truly, me boy, J Money. And here's what I have to offer. A lots and lots of gamey topics. One centering around why Billy Mitchell is such a fucking douche. 
In case you don't know who Billy Mitchell is, he is once renowned as the, one of the greatest video game players of all time, is now known along with Mr. Activision as a fucking cheater, and now he's trying to get back oh. at the people who exposed him by suing them for one million dollars. Good luck with that. Um, hmm. As Ken Knapsack once said, good luck with that. Poor Ken. Poor Ken. <laughs> Poor Ken. <laughs> And I also have two video game reviews, Journey and Shadow of the Colossus, and my top five favorite and least favorite of the Colossus side to go up against the 10 worst women's wrestlers. Um, I was going to do a rant on this, but I'll hold off. Uh, an announcement on a future game. And... Be- what are you doing, Gary? Gary, what are you doing? I'm not really doing anything. What are you doing, Gary? What? In that case, pepperoni, Mr. Care Bear's Day, us in eating hay, Shane's fucking Tina Fey, I hate Christian Grey, I'm going to the bay, and I'm going to eat some late potatoes. <laughs> Hope you're proud of yourself. <laughs> what can I say? I'm an overachiever. <laughs> to compensate. Uh, just... so... And let's begin. Okay, so before we... Okay, so let's go ahead and get to this whole topic. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's one thing that goes out there in the world of entertainment. This is the thing what Shano just said. People seem to judge things by its cover before actually going in to start reading it. Yep. Basically judging a book by its cover alone. Now, folks, here's the thing, though. We're going to... Now, we talked about this with movies a while back. We're going to center around this with video games a little bit more. Now, here's the thing, though. The Last of Us Part 2, I'm going to talk a little briefly about that. In terms of the controversy of what's been going on with the leaks that's being put out there for the internet that's been exploited, there's a big word for you, exploited. <laughs> big fucking word, exploited. You exploded? Eh, it makes sense. It's been exploited out there for everybody to see and whatnot. But the thing is, you as a person has a choice to either have the actual logic to keep your anticipations up, be excited for the game, and avoid the spoilers by not going either on the sites or just keeping yourself away from it at all. Basically, just distancing yourself from that shit. So mm-hmm. be smart, not dumb, and ruin your own anticipation for the game because of some idiot from a company who was a complete dickhead after some controversial moments happened within one woman whose name was, I don't remember her name, the bitch who huh? leaked out oh. the part two because of what happened with Naughty Dog. You mean where she where the story drew inspiration from, you mean? What are you trying to say, Gary? Yeah, I'm trying the whole dilemma with Naughty Dog about that one person who got fired from the company leaked the spoilers. Put them no, out. I'm not uh, sure. I don't, I don't think spoilers. you have your story straight. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, as continuing on here, don't worry about that. Skip that. The point I want to make is, folks, for a video game alone, here's the thing, though. Despite what what's being put on the internet in terms of spoilers, teasers, you shouldn't even let you shouldn't even let shit like that get ruin your anticipation for a game. Because the thing is, if you see shit like that, avoid it with all costs. Well, some, your- sometimes it's unavoidable at times. It kind of sucks. Yeah. It kind of sucks for everybody, yeah. especially who's excited for the game. But enough about The Last of Us Part 2. There's one thing I want to talk about. The main topic is, folks, why the fuck are people judging a video game without even playing it? That, thank you. I, I, that that stuff pisses me. I mean, it happens with movies too. It happens with all entertainment mediums. Yeah, it's it's just something that does. It's it's one of those things where at yeah. times it's like a knee jerk reaction. Yeah, and so. and something I want to point out is that I know somebody that has read the leaks, has seen it, and even he said people are blowing this without proportion. I have no idea what the leaks are. I, I, uh, I'm not going to go to bother. I will say this much. Um, there was one thing I speculated that might happen. And I think I may have confirmed for myself, but I still want to see how it is done in the game still. Um, but nonetheless, 
Guys, um... <laughs> to judge a fucking game before it comes out, it's like... Imagine going into a roundtable discussion and everyone's discussing that game and they've actually played and beaten it. You're the only one that hasn't played the game. You've only judged it from what you have seen from maybe cutscenes or screenshots. And basically you say, the game sucked. And they're like, why, is that? why so? Uh, you're going to look like a fucking idiot going into that discussion. I can discussion. tell you why Death Stranding sucked because the gameplay. <laughs> Well, that, that's a polarizing, I can understand yeah. that. Um, and I've been playing Death Stranding. I actually can say I've really enjoyed f from what I've played so far. Um, but, Gary, yeah, I don't want to say everything that you want to say. Uh, so, the thing is, <laughs> for people out there who are saying, oh, I hate this game already, from whatever it may be, if it's like a picture or a trailer or a conceptual thing, or if you're even assuming yourself saying, oh, I'm going to hate this game right away, oh, I'm going to love it right away, the question is, you're act, you are acting like an idiot. You kind of you are acting like an idiot, basically put, assuming yourself in a position to a piece of media that you haven't even played yet. You can't just go in and say, "Oh, I'm gonna hate this right away because of one piece of fucking picture." Well, I mean, it's more it's more than one picture. Apparently, more, a couple of cutscenes that leaked. But I'm staying far away from everything. And that's the smart thing to do is avoid yep. it with all costs. So yep. not only you can keep your anticipations up, have your ideas. Have your own entire have your own entire um, anticipation for what it is that you want to see in the game. Now the thing is, if you want, the thing is, folks, for a game alone, if you want to have your own standards for your own for your own basic standards that you want to have for, if you see like a piece of trailer or something, you can say, oh, it come, it doesn't look that great from the way it looks thus far. Or it, so far, it doesn't really have that same type of eye appeal that is really given a showcase. But hey, certain yeah. things like that, you can speculate, you can have your own standards of exactly what it is. But if you're going to automatically be blind saying, oh, I'm going to not like this right away, then you are just putting yourself in a fucking bad assumption. Absolutely, so, you are. Absolutely. Be smart. Keep your mind, keep your mind open. Have that into space you originally had prior beforehand. Keep engaged. Buy the game. Or if you want to rent it, just to give it a try. Be engaged with the game. Play it and see how your perspective will turn out once you start playing. It's called giving it a chance. Yep. And something else I want to point out is that apparently, well, the cutscenes have leaked. And though Naughty Dog has stated that this is their longest game. And I can't imagine how long. I, I, I'm going to probably ballpark maybe 20, 25 hours the length that God of War was. But here's the thing. A lot of people are saying this and this and this. Like, okay, so you probably saw maybe like an hour or something out of maybe a 20 plus hour game. How this can you, you judge that? This, re this reminds me of the release of Joker. Hey, yeah. No. Holy shit. You got a point there. Yeah. Mm, it is. I mean, the controversy is strong. I mean, a lot of people are saying that it's... They don't like how, essentially, how a lot of people are saying they don't like how the game, even though Ellie is one of the greatest characters in a video game, easily. I've been, I've been playing The Last of Us, and there's a scene I just got past. I won't split because I know Robin wants to replay it. But um, <laughs> it's been but, a it's been many years since yeah, I played it. So, but Ellie is one of the most well written characters I've ever um, seen in a video game, and a lot of and a lot of people are not liking the fact that it has a lot of stance on the LGBT community. Okay. First of all, I said this a million times. Look at the way they handle it at that E3 trailer. Exactly. Exactly. That was perfect. Mm -hmm. By the way, just not to cut in, the person I was trying to talk about, I went back look at the messages. Uh, Anita Stark. Yeah, that's who we were. That's who we were. That's who we're thinking trying, about. That's who I was trying to. Buy I fucking her. hate this bitch. No, this is what I will. I didn't know her name. <laughs> so this is what I will say about that. Um, a lot of people are saying that that she had a hand in the game. She did not, from what I know. She did not. I mean, uh, from what I know is that there's influence, but it's not a strong influence from what I've been hearing. Like, he, here's the thing that people don't realize, that this is not written by that person. It's written by Neil Druckmann and actually one of the writers of fucking Westworld, of which I've heard nothing but amazing things about. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, as this person is very controversial, apparently... Oh, I, I fucking can't stand this bitch. She... Dude, I remember she made a fucking complaints when Doom 2016 got released at E3, mm -hmm. making it all violent and everything, and even the people at it were like, 
you're not killing humans. You're killing demons and fucking destroying hell. What are you even, whining about? Even Hugo Mara was like, you're doing God's work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty much. Um, I'm so, but just be- decision, you're just like Grace Randolph. The only thing good about you is your looks. Fuck off. But I'm just going to say it's just because someone has had maybe had some type of given advice to Neil Druckmann. I wouldn't say that they have ruined it because then again, we haven't gotten our hands on this thing. It's still it still is. A, we still have over a month before it comes out, guys. Yeah. But uh, Gary, you continue on. OK, so to continue on from there, folks, yeah. the thing is, if you don't have your hands on the actual game yet, you're. I just find it to be absolutely ridiculous of why fucking spec, why fucking assume things where you don't even have the game yet. So point being, folks, get the game, keep your anticipations up, play it for yourself, have your own likes and dislikes, and from there, that's all I can really technically say. And not just that, keep an open mind too. By the way, even Troy Baker said, "Hey, just go with an open mind." And even people have said that this will be a divisive game. Well, that's which I'm curious, which I'm curious well, about. Well, if that's the thing, people don't use an open mind anymore. They rather fucking assume shit now. Before they yep. Yeah. Which annoys the shit out of me, to say the least. But that's how people are these days, man. Yeah. yeah that, 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 that's all I have to say, because Gary and I do have a full-blown video coming next month about this whole, about The Last of Us in general. So. Yeah, and speaking of that, we might as well, might as well get to your shit surrounding that. Well, all right. Well, <laughs> uh, well... Well, my oh well, I mean, I didn't really have that much to say about. It. I mean, other than I mean, other than like replaying the game, I can say is that the game is actually hitting me harder than it did because then again, when I played it the first time, I you know I had a, I had friends over, so we're, and I think I was later on in the game, but now like since the game, and I'm kind of refreshing my memory of everything. But I can tell you the game, like I said, it's hitting me so much harder than I did the first time. The stuff involving Henry and Sam, the things involving Tommy, uh, it's just. It's one, like, and someone actually asked me last night, um, because I beat Spec Ops Lando, which I will get into a little bit, but someone was asking me, which hit you harder, Spec Ops or The Last of Us? And I said, well, here's the thing, it's hit, both games hit you hard in different ways, where, the, where Spec Ops hit you because you think you're doing something good, where in the end, you feel like a villain by the end of it. This one, is just, it's the characters that hit you hard in the writing in general. So, I, I can't really say um, but yeah, that, that's all I want to say in terms of last, because like I said, Gary and I, we're going to go into so much in terms of the game next month. Here's what I have to say about the last of those folks. Yeah. Now, in terms of gaming alone, I'm very critical. I'm one of the most critical. I'm probably someone who's very fucking critical in terms of gaming. I can, I can really say that because this is the same guy who doesn't like control. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still in shock over that. Then again, this is the guy who hated Red Dead 2. And this is someone yeah. <laughs> who thinks Outer Worlds to be the most overrated game he's ever played. So the thing is, when it comes to games, I look for a lot of specific things. Whether it's like the main thing, little thing, or better yet, specific things. I look at specific things because I personally believe in a video game, the littlest things matter and it makes a big difference. So when, when I look at a game, I like seeing, I want to have great gameplay, fantastic story. Little shit like the background, music, uh, specs like maps, upgrades, you name it. Especially with what the format is for the game alone. I want things to be perfect. You know, like Gordon Ramsay style. You want things to be perfect. It's fucking raw! The Last of Us is that <laughs> one of the <laughs> games that is perfect. That game is just beyond a thrill. The story alone is something that is emotional. It's hard hitting. It has a simple, basic plot, but it goes a long way with one transpires. You got characters that you fall in love with right away that starts off with a connection where they're not friends and they just grow into something beautiful as the whole game progresses from beginning to end. It's a whole emotional roller coaster with some of the best gameplay and some of the extraordinary. Fresh types of controls and gameplay content you will ever see. And some of the most outstanding strategy values that I have witnessed and played and experienced in a video game. Right. Last of Us, it's one of my all-time favorites. I agree. Same. It is a perfect video game, regardless, no matter what. It's one of my favorites. It really is. There's my little summary. 
I uh, but, the last one. Something I want to bring up as well that a lot of people are saying that crunched uh, the development of the game was because of crunch time. This is also thing I'll say about crunch time. No one likes crunch time in terms of video game development. It's something that every developer wants to avoid. However, it's something that unfortunately it hap It's actually a common thing that happens. Crunch time. It yep. happens. It gives and you. And it gives you a sugar rush. Yep. And uh, Doom Eternal it happened with. It happened with. It happened with the original Gears of War. I imagine it happened with the with Gears Two and Three. It happened with the original Red Dead Redemption. And but hey, that doesn't. But it doesn't always make it a bad game just because of crunch time. I mean, sure. Are the conditions bad? Yes, because no one wants to be a part of that. But at the same time... WWE 2K20. <laughs> I, I like a crunch time to say... I I mean, it's not really a, the best comparison, but it's the same way that people look at reshoots of the film industry, where people go like, oh, reshoots are a bad thing. It's a common thing that happens, unfortunately. <laughs> God damn it, it barbles. He, I said sugar rust because I was mimicking the crunch bar. Get it? Oh, crunch yeah. bar. And he goes, sugar rust? I love Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but no, like, gonna go there. but no, like crunch time is unfortunately it's a thing that no one likes, but it is a common thing that happens in the video game world. It happens. It's like, very, it's very common and it's very unfortunate. Like with Doom Eternal, I think that Hugo Marnde he did an interview with No Clip Podcast. He was saying that they wanted to crunch time for like what three to four months before they actually had to delay the game. And but yep. he, but the thing is, he even said I am. He even said that during that crunch time, they actually improved. During that time, and he was right on this. Once you get one, okay, it's like I said, it's like take it. Okay, Doom twenty sixteen is like graduating through uh, high school. Doom Eternal is like graduating through college. Yeah. If you hear the fans, let me know, and I'll move it because, like I said, it's hot as shit in Arizona. Yeah. Man. Well, I would yeah. hear the fans, except they're all home in isolation. <laughs> yes. Would you fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, one more thing I want to add before Roman says anything, though, the development for, apparently there has been a lot of turnover because I can only, because here is the thing, something I read up about Naughty Dog, there is no producer at Naughty Dog. There's no producer, actually. So basically, there is no one there to look over somebody. Like, every, they have complete creative control upon it everything on Naughty Dog. So it's a very unique management style. So I can imagine that's probably why there's a lot of turnover. But then again, I can't say because like a, because I'm not at Naughty Dog physically to see what's going on over there. But Naughty Dog is known as one of the greatest studios for a reason. They have never been a bad game. And the thing is, that's my favorite game studio too. It's one of Mine, my favorites, yeah. Mine's uh, Rockstar North. Rockstar is great. Rockstar is great. Along, along with that big woke when Cliff Pozinski was there. Um, but yeah, Gary, as you were about to say. Uh, yeah, there's a couple other ones, but go ahead. Well, what was I going to say? Oh, oh, I thought, oh, I thought you had more to say. Um, well, but... no, the only thing I can ask is, I mean, Shano, he was talking about with the whole Yakuza thing, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. Um... Seven is coming state side, but it's going to be known as um, like a dragon instead, which is yeah. actually the English translation for Yakuza's um, main uh, title. Actually, which is very interesting. Uh, but make no mistake, it is the seventh installment in the series, uh, despite it having new characters and everything like that. Uh, it looks great. It it looks like Yakuza. It sounds like it. Mm -hmm. And people are wondering, does it play like it? And I still think it does. Okay. The, the, the problem is, is that people are having an issue with its combat system, which I understand. But listen, there's been six Yakuza games, and I think three spinoffs, and they've all had basically the same combat system. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that it's bad, because the combat system is very fun. It's so much fun just beating the shit out of guys who just want to try to ruin your day. Um, <laughs> it, it's it's just it's just a whole lot of fun. But the thing is, is that it's like a it's a beat 'em up style type of a uh, game, um, where you essentially are going from different parts in the uh, streets of Camarocho to do what you need to do and whatever it is, and. Um, it's just one of those things that it's not like a random battle because you can usually see when enemies are kind of around. Mm -hmm. uh, but in 7, it's a lot like that, except it's turn-based. 
Okay, so it's like oh, okay, so it it's has a, like. Well, the reason why it's turn based is because, um, well, technically speaking, they wanted to try something new, and it opens up a whole new door for crazy shit to go on. Uh, which is a welcome addition because I've seen one person say that it's too, uh, it's too silly to be Yakuza. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Have you it's played? Too silly? Have you ever? Have dude. you played the series? <laughs> <laughs> dude, the fucking maneuvers he does towards enemies and how they go fucking flying and shit. Especially that's, when that's, he takes a baseball bat and it's like smacks him in the fucking face. It's hilarious. That's part of the appeal of it. Yeah, it's like it, it knows when it takes itself seriously, but it knows when it, it can be great slapstick comedic. Well, yeah, because it's um, the thing is, is that it's um. Simply put, it's a the story with the entire series is about um, tough guys getting into tough situations. But then, like you have this other side of the of the series where it is just goofy as fuck, dude. Oh yeah. <laughs> Honestly, there's um, I think it's called a telephone club, but there's this mini game you get to do. Where you get to try to t uh, talk the chicks over the phone, and the way Kiryu answers the phone if you do the quick time event right is so over the top you can't help but laugh and love it. <laughs> so back to seven. Um, so there's a lot of craziness within seven, is because like the, uh, since it's a uh, turn-based RPG, they got things like you get normal RPGs like in Final Fantasy, like um, summons and stuff. Like you literally call people up on a phone and use uh, summons. It's great. Um, and it's goofy as fuck. It really is. But that's why we love it. Um, and people are saying that, that it's just too goofy. It's like, play the fucking games, you'll see what I mean. I but, of course... You. What's that? I want to ask you something now. Sure. I don't know if this is any relation, but I kind of somewhat have a bit of an ideal concept. Now, I was looking at the sale on PSN about the whole big in Japan sale that's going on. They got some really interesting stuff on there. One game came across me, and I saw the trailer. It kind of reminded me a little, about, a little bit of Yakuza with the whole entire format with the whole concept, but I don't know okay. if, if there's a similarities. Judgment. That's a spinoff. <laughs> okay. It takes place It takes place in Kamurocho, so it takes place in, in universe. Um, like the main uh, Yakuza clan from the main series is a part of... Um, of that series as well too, but judgment takes place. Um, I think around the time six does and um, it's entirely, it's entirely about an, an ex lawyer being a detective. Okay. So it's, okay. yeah, oh, it's, oh, wow. Hey, we tied our record 32 viewers. Look at that. Very nice. Yeah. Um, well, but yes, I, I absolutely agree. Anyone who wants to play a, a really awesome crime drama series that by the end has a good chance of making you weep like a baby, play Yakuza. Seriously. I, I do have. I do for the karaoke. <laughs> Karaoke is in fact a uh, mini game in the Those yeah. parts are those parts are so dumb but god it's oh, so much fun. fun. It's great. So back to 7. So people are upset about the fact that it's turn-based combat. And the thing is I I don't know if they've actually played 7 cuz I have. I've played it. And I think it's perfectly fine. No, I only 3. We broke our record. Very nice. And um the thing is is that I've, I've played seven. I've got to experience a little bit of it. Not everything, of course, because I don't have the game and I'm not importing it because I need to understand the story. <laughs> but um, it plays just fine. Perfect. I'm perfectly honest with you. It's turn based. It's a bit jarring at first, but it's so much fun. Now, the, the turn based combat is a little weird because like positioning and stuff is very strange like if you try to hit somebody who's uh behind another dude some dude's gonna intercept you by kicking your legs from under you yeah. <laughs> when you say it. that i'm thinking of owen hart when he, when he goes i'm gonna i kicked his leg out of his leg <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like you also have some crazy funny shit that happens uh, sometimes just by complete accident like this one time i managed to throw a dude into the street and he got ran over by a car and it did extra damage 
That reminds like, me of the, the fucking fatality in Mortal Kombat 9, the pit, when you yeah. throw him in the street and he gets hit by the car. <laughs> yeah, because the, the main character of Seven, um, Ichiban, he has this, um, in one of his classes, his um, normal hand-to-hand one, I forgot what it's called, I, I have to look up the translation, but um, actually it might just be called number one or something like named after him but anyways oh, i don't want to know what the number i don't want to know what number two is oh uh, well yeah i think you already have an idea but um anyhow um all joking aside it's his uh, normal hand-to-hand uh, fighting style and there's this one where you can get throw uh, get somebody into a headlock and just toss their ass that's what <laughs> I, I did i i used that skill to throw a dude into the street and the car oh, actually came by and oh, actually did more damage oh like a hit toss or like a judo flip in, in a way, but it's like very rudimentary, because oh, like because Ichiban is not exactly like an adept fighter, but he's like he's just really tough. I so. like Ichiban too. Tano. What's up? I like Ichiban too. Yeah, he's he's pretty cool. Like I don't, he seems like a really like promising protagonist because like oh, Kiryu cool. is great just because like he looks menacing and very much so like this dude that you don't want to meet in a dark alleyway but mm-hmm. in truth he's actually got a heart of gold and is a little goofy you know what he reminds me of oh, mm. oh no hey gary the, the lead character in the yakuza series he looks like the type of guy that would take constance Wu out <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had understood the context of this, but so. because the main character Gary. in uh, Crazy Rich Asians really looks like the main character in Yakuza, and does he look like Kiryu? Really? Yeah, in a little way, and Gary loves Constance Wu, and when he was uh, watching the movie, he... more, motherfucker, you have her. I like Hikaru Shida even better. <laughs> what the? What the? Shut the f- no! Woo! No! Yeah, um, yes. No. Yes. Yes. Well, anyways, yes! before Sorry. before I rant on Yakuza again, like I usually do, um, my my issue is, is that when people don't who are already saying I'm not buying the game, and it's like you have the absolute right to reserve to that, you can do so, but like if it's just the combat, have you actually played it? And if you have played it and didn't like it, that's fine. You know, it's not going to be for everyone. It, I, I understand the change is jarring, but don't just sit there and be like, I'm not buying it. If you, if you, especially if you're a fan, if you're a fan of the series and you're like, I'm not buying it because this reason, just try it. You may be surprised as I was in the boat when I'm like, mm, I don't know about this combat system until I actually played it. And I was like, Holy shit, this is really fun. But you know what that reminds me of Shane? When you said that people won't buy because of the combat system, yeah, that reminds me of the reason why people won't buy Final Fantasy VII Remake is because it's only part one of a series. Yeah, so it's like it's. I understand that, and I understand like the whole thing, but like for one, Final Fantasy VII when it first came out came out I think on like three or four discs. Oh yeah, it was, and and plus from what I played, by the way, guys, um, the game has over fifty plus hours of content in it. Yeah, it's only the first part. Yeah, only like, the first part. I mean, this is this is a big deal. Is a oh really big deal. yeah, and I understand. Like, I I'm not crazy about the fact that we have to pay. I'm pretty certain pay for more of the parts, but like, same. It's like, at the same time, if it's really good, I don't know. It's a very I'm very conflicted about it. Let's put it that way. I'm very conflicted because I really I want to get a uh, remake uh, so bad. I really do. <sighs> It's just, um, yeah, it's, and there's some parts of me that's just like, I don't know if I want to, but it, I've heard so many good things about it. I, just, I can I say really... this, Shane. Uh, mm-hmm. The combat is amazing. It, it's a great mix of the JRPG with, you know, the action RPG of, let's say, Final Fantasy XV or Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Though, I will say, though, I'm sure you've heard this already. The yeah. ending is very mixed. Yeah, so the thing is, is that what I heard, it has very strong hints of Tetsuya Nomura in there. Oh, it does. Yeah, it does. so I figured, because like, one of my friends actually played the game for two days straight. He's oh, one, of, one of my players in uh, my campaign, by the way. Oh, okay. He, he played for like, he said literally 48 hours. And the thing is, I know that sounds like hyperbole, but I fully believe him, because he's the kind of guy who would do that. 48 so, hours straight? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Tetsuya Yamamoto. Oh, I love that guy. He made Donkey Kong and Mario. <laughs> I, see, I even couldn't ever do me turtle, and I fucking love that. 
that game. Yeah, so he he played that straight, and he said like he was so confused by the end of it, and I was like, oh, I won't that, say that this. sounds like Nomura right there. I was I wouldn't say I was confused by it, but there's definitely a lot of things where I was like, okay, there are things I think are great, but then there are things I'm just like, why? Mm, I'll I'll have to play it and find out because like yeah. I really want to get into it. I it's really a, do. It is a honestly, I think it's a good game for a person that didn't love the original game. But I do think this is a great remake so far. It does feel like a lot of build up because it's yeah. like part one. But it's honestly, it's good. Pretty great actually. I think it's Yeah, really good. I um I I have a thing with Tetsuya Nomura as well, too. <laughs> because like he's earned my respect as an artist because mm-hmm. Me being somebody who practices in art. In fact, I was actually just doing something before I got started talking. Uh, which um, uh, which picture did you draw that Gary's going to fucking jerk off to? Oh, God. <laughs> no. <laughs> Is it a bird, a fox, or <laughs> eagle? <laughs> no, I actually made a uh, thing from a um, from Monster Hunter, actually. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But... That's true, but Shano does get pretty detailed with the sets. Oh, he does. But, but anyways, um, so what? Well, okay, I, I almost lost my my place here. <laughs> but Tetsuya Nomura, I have a I have a lot of respect for him as an artist because one time when he was making um the concept for Squall in Kingdom Hearts, mm-hmm. one of the uh, people he was working with said, "You know, I think he's wearing way too many belts." I think you need to cut back on that. You know what Tetsuya Mora did? What do you say? He added more belts in retaliation. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, you think that's a lot? Mm-hmm. Well, let me show you. Okay, that's hilarious. Yeah, like, he's basically the epitome of, don't tell me how to do my fucking job. Yeah. It's like, it's like, um, uh, Harada-san from, uh, who does, um, Tekken. He has oh, a gr- okay. great, se- he has a great sense of humor, and I love that man. <laughs> All the homo. <laughs> I will say, in terms of the storytelling of Tetsuya, that's where it's, yeah. yeah but, Especially Kingdom Hearts 3. But, yeah, but anyways, all seriousness, Harada's a great guy, and he doesn't deserve the flack he gets at times, because people bitch and complain about guest characters. But anyways, um, I agree, though. Nomura has this really weird, like, storytelling thing where it's... I mean, if you want a prime example besides Kingdom Hearts, look at Final Fantasy XV. Mm-hmm. The first half... Had me. That was they. They had me at the first half. To be fair, I stopped playing the game. I really did. <laughs> I second half. I'm like, holy shit! This has no direction. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Pretty it, much. It, it sounds yeah, like. It's, and it's because, um, like, Nomura had so many ideas for 15. Like at one point, he wanted to make it into a musical. I'm not even joking. He really did. <laughs> He had no idea what to do with it. My God, that explains why he loves those musical bits in his games. Yeah, he does. Like uh, he he is a uh, a musical fan, actually. Uh, that explains everything. Holy crap, <laughs> doesn't it? Right, <laughs> but yeah, it's just really bizarre. Like his storytelling has really strong potential to be good, but at the same time, I think he's caught up by decision paralysis, which I totally understand. I believe me, <laughs> I get that. Like it's it sounds like to me that Tessu Nomura, I mean, as a person who's played quite a few, especially with Final Fantasy VII Remake, he seems like a type of guy who who throws a bunch of ideas at the wall and he just hopes that all of them stick, but not all of them do. Let's hope that there's continuity. <laughs> oh god, I'm hoping that there is for the next Final Fantasy VII Remake game. Holy yeah, crap! I hope there but is. Anyways, without droning on too long, yeah. Um... Just don't join our book batch cover, guys. If you really genuinely don't like something. Please give her a reason as to why. Yeah. If you've actually tried something, you know, it's kind of like you can put that in basis of really anything, like food, for example. You know, I used to be the kind of guy who would say, like, I didn't like that, but I never actually tried it. Now I'm a little more adventurous. As, as older, was so. I. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm still a bit of a picky fucking eater, but, you know, <laughs> Dude, I know that feeling all too well. But I'm not as picky as this guy below me over here. And I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, I'm a, oh, I'm adventurous, too. Oh, are you? I am. Right? Hey, you two get a fucking room. Oh, we will. <laughs> Gary. I said room, not in front of a live audience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Romeo, I want you to take this bat and I want you to swing it as hard as you can. All right, on top of my head. Don't hold back. 
Where the yeah, fuck yeah, you yeah, yeah, I usually yeah. have it by my door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough. Oh shit, I gotta find my bat. Oh. That, that's my boo boo above oh, me. Oh my god. You ever seen the ray too? Well, <laughs> I was gonna say, well, at least I know who's pitcher and who's catcher. Oh, for. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pitcher. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but for Gary, he's <laughs> gonna need a catcher. Oh, I'll admit, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I'm a pitcher. Oh, for I was God's hoping sake. to incite a, like, a little argument, but. More like the pitch. Oh, so you want to instigate? Yes. You oh. dick. <laughs> <laughs> you, you dick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Who wants to go next? Or whatever. Um, well, let's see. Well, Romy, since you didn't really get to go yet uh, last week, would you like to go watch your topics? No. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's like no. Would you like me to go next, Gary? No. Wow, look at those. He's so sad now. Look at him. Ah, ah, I do baby. You the baby. I the baby. No. You got baby. me upset. I the baby. Oh, oh, he's gonna get off the bed. Oh God. You got me upset. No. Oh, look at this now. Look it's at this. a baby. Have it's you seen a, a baby. Uh, guys, have you seen oh, a more you, pitiful sight? You go <laughs> eat a fucking cinder block. Do your shit. Come on. I'm done. Come on. Romy? No, you apologize. Do I have to apologize? Yes. I want to apologize. <laughs> apologize. Apologize is overrated. I'm not doing it. Then don't talk to me. Good. No talk to me, I angry. <laughs> I'm very, very angry and very sad. I said that was fucking funny. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I'm gonna get killed. Angry? Oh, she, he's a good director. Oh my god, big psychopaths. I said, wow, wow, wow. Someone called Romeo a wambulance. <laughs> well, go ahead, do your shit. No! You I apologize! I told you, go out there and stop. I'm not going to do anything. You now. apologize! Oh, apologize is overrated. I don't want to do it. Gary. Well, we got about another oh, hour. Now. Gary, will you please apologize? Why? Because I am at. Because I'm have you seen that? Have you not seen a more oh, beautiful first story? Off, why the fuck should I apologize after the fucking. Bullshit remarks that he gives me from last week and the episode before okay. that, the episode this week. I have every fucking right to be mad. You, you do, you do, you do. Papa. That's all I'm hearing. What the hell was this? Like the teacher from Taliban. That's exactly what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, breeze boy. Hairball. <laughs> Tell him to stop licking his balls. <laughs> I don't need to apologize after the fucking bullshit remark you put me that dog pissing joke I, that was hit towards me. I have every right to be fucking mad. He does, actually. Yeah, I don't need to okay. apologize. Okay, I'm sensing a lot of tension in the room here. <laughs> because I have every right to be upset for the past fucking two, three goddamn episodes. It's been nothing more but hush. Criticism on me in the most negative, preposterous way, and there's another big fucking word for you. <laughs> preposterous, preposterous. <laughs> and one and two Preposter. and three. <laughs> Feel the burn. <laughs> and, a, and a one and a two and a one two three four. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. That's bad. How do we play better. so quiet that no one can hear us? Yes. <laughs> Drum sleeping with sunglasses. Yes. I sleep. Yes. <laughs> yes. So that's what a broken condom sounds like. You learn something new every day. Okay, it looks like you're about to explode. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it looks like you're about to explode. I think he did. I think he blew a gasket. You know what he looked like? He looked like he was, he was like, the, he looked like, um, who was it? Um, in a uh, big trouble little China when that one guy was about, was exploding. <laughs> <laughs> he looked just like that. Yeah, second. yeah. Okay, this is Lucas at a spelling bee. P E N 
Q-U-I-N. Pumpkin. Okay. <laughs> and Tyler Calvert just said, <laughs> Tyler Calvert just said, Gary's gone Super Saiyan 3. <laughs> Super Saiyan 3. Okay. What would you like me to go over first? Let's go with the wrestling topic first just to get that out of the way. Okay. These are the 10 worst women's wrestlers of all time. I know number one is. Be quiet. I do. Wow. <laughs> wow. Let's see if I can find this shit, because like I said, I have a lot of shit on my plate here. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm trying to find it. Oh my god, I keep typing the wrong fucking word. What are you doing that for? Oh What'd you do god. that for? I didn't do it on purpose. Will you quit talking? You're like, you're from England or something. I don't tell me what to do. Okay, I found it. Okay, these are all in alphabetical order. Except for my number one. You ready? Here we go. First one. Okay, Gary, you might be able to relate, and maybe the others. Uh, Cameron. If you don't know who oh Cameron was, God, Cameron was part of the uh, the Funkadactyls along with uh, Naomi, I believe, right? Yeah. and the thing Naomi's is talented. Cameron is fucking god-awful. Oh, my God, dude. If you ever see a wrestler, she can't even do a fucking arm drag or a back break or anything. Not Cameron Diaz. Uh, hmm. We'll have to see, Tyler. <laughs> well, listen, I, already know number, I already know who number one is. Shut the fuck up. I'm not even saying that to joke around. I be quiet. I don't, do. worry, don't spoil. I don't even know the list. No I spoilers. I already know number one. Is you heard the man. If you don't be quiet, I'm going to open up your mouth and take a number one. You know, I've been awfully nice. Ew. Well, well Gary... Okay. You're gonna, you're gonna get me killed too. Well, oh, that's not the first. Stop time. playing the game. <laughs> get off the damn! Get off the damn! Doom Eternal is an essential, essential business. It is actually Doom Eternal is essentially. I won't lie there. It's an essential business. Some people like good money for that business. Uh, next one. This woman <coughs> was only there to showcase her tits and ass because she was nothing but a Playboy model, and that is Candice Michelle. Oh, I was thinking Tori Wilson, but okay. Uh, but yeah, Candice Michelle, dude. Yeah, all she was just a fucking model just to showcase her, her look. That was a screen. She can't wrestle either. She was a woman's champion. And this woman won the Diva Search, the first one. And yeah, she made a personality, but she was god off on the ring. Christy Hemi. Yeah, she was better as a, a backstage <laughs> announcer. Yeah. She had the voice. She actually had a really good voice. Like she had the pe personality, but my gosh, she was ass in the ring. Believe it or not, she was a pretty interesting um, announcer too, in terms of and introducing the wrestlers. Mm -hmm. She was pretty good at that. Next one, Jackie Guy uh, Guida. She was part of Tough Enough. I don't remember. Her. She was the blonde. <laughs> you don't remember? I actually don't. Oh, she had this <laughs> awful match in a tag match with Trish Stratus on Raw, and Trish Stratus was so fucking pissed, and I don't blame her. Next one, oh, the woman who slept with, God, the, the woman who's been around more often than a fucking doorknob at a <laughs> at the White House, and that is Kelly Kelly. <laughs> yeah, she, was just, you know, she was just another fucking Barbie who entered the ring, couldn't wrestle worth a shit, all she was there was just for looks. She was awful. <laughs> And she, was, and she was kind of like Sunny. She slept a lot with a lot of people. I don't, uh, I have something unrelated, but I don't want to alarm you. But Tommy me so has a new, uh, early Christmas deal for everybody. Oh, shit. Yeah, you can go onto his site. He says, Happy Monday. Early Christmas deal is alive. I'm going to right sweatpants. Comes oh. free with Blu ray, including free mask. Protect yourself. Be safe. Oh, my God. I want to get a football signed by him. So do I. <laughs> okay, next one. How the fuck is this even possible? Because Hereditary, and I'm not talking about that fucking god-awful shitty piece of shit movie. You be quiet. Fuck! Fuck you! That movie's garbage. And it's one of the best horror films ever made. Yeah. People who are quiet. You two be quiet. <laughs> you two be quiet. Anyways, Very move on. Fucking hack. Moving on. Uh, the Von Erics. It's better than Midsummer. Um, Lazy Von Eric. Lazy Von Eric. Oh my word. 
She can't, dude. You want to know what's kind of? You want to know what's embarrassing about her? <coughs> dude, mm-hmm. the Von Eric Claw the right way. And the Von Erics have like a great, you know, history of amazing talent. But Lacey, oh my gosh, she. Yeah. Where does she fit in this? I don't get it. She, like I said, she can't do the, Von, the infamous Von Eric Claw right. Uh, next one, a hey, uh, Tyler. You just mentioned her, Nia Jax. <laughs> Oh, the bitch who injures everybody. Yeah, says the bitch who wants to, uh, oh, uh, what's her name? Oh, what's that fucking Barbie doll? She's like a best friend of hers. Oh, Alexa shit. Bliss. Oh, Ronda Rousey, you know, she's too rough of Alexa Bliss. <laughs> bitch, how many people have you injured? <laughs> Seriously, Nia Jax has injured so many fucking people. She's a garbage in the fucking ring. She's... She's so she's she's fuck she's a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah, also the way she fucking threw Tyree Sane in the ring pose. Oh right? yeah. <laughs> Gave her a concussion. Fuck Nia Jax, go back to your modeling, because that's all you're good for. You suck. Uh okay, next one. Some people may have heard of her, some people may not. She was a uh, a bodybuilder, Nicole Bass. Oh, I've heard of her. I've heard of her. Oh, next one. Oh, one of the biggest bitches who ever step in the wrestling ring. Sable. Hmm. Honey, you're garbage. You only had your good looks, and Vince Russo and Vince McMahon were drooling all over you. Modeling for fat chicks, Jerome? <laughs> yeah, maybe John Cena would fuck her because he loves fucking fat chicks. Don't blame me. Go to the bar when he was on the Howard Stern show. To me, the worst women's wrestler of all time. This this is without question, and that of course is Eva Marie. Hmm. I have never seen a women's wrestler suck this fucking bad. She's nothing but a goddamn Barbie doll with yeah, big, all, big tits. All she was good was being on that show, Big Brother, and that was it. Yeah. All she was just another reality star. I've seen her work in the ring. Actually, I'm not even going to call it a work. Her slopping. Oh uh, it, it's, it, it's putrid. It's the most, she's basically one of the most, it, she's one of those women that you can say is the equivalency of being an abominational disaster to women's wrestling. Dude, she the Shockmaster is better than her. <laughs> oh, God. Dude, that, she is the without I know. question the fucking worst. Okay, having said that, what can I do next? Let's see here. What do you want me to do next? What do you want me to do? Talk about Journey. Journey? Yeah. Uh, I played this a little while ago. Journey was available for free on the PSN, and I was just like, you know what? I played it a long, long time ago, but I want to go back and refresh my memory and see how this game was. Now, Journey is an independent game <coughs> where you play as a mysterious individual in a red um, in a red robe, certain like, who... <laughs> Journey, what a great band. That's something that Gary would say. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't want to this time because I don't feel like it. Gotta get my ball of water. Wow. Let's see. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that's better. As you were saying, Romy. <laughs> if you really want me to tell you who that character was from um from uh Journey, it was that it was the one from Spirit. It was the one character from Spirit of the Way. Oh, okay. I was gonna, yeah. Oh, you shut the fuck up, Luke Nukem. <laughs> you goddamn asswipe. Yeah, if I would say that, then I wouldn't do a speed run and, <laughs> and post it on my Facebook. Now, speed run. Okay, now, Journey is a game about, what do you know? A journey. It's, it focuses on a Roll mysterious. Credits. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> on a mysterious, unknown individual in a red robe who you start out in the middle of the desert and your goal is to make it towards this particular destination, which is like a mountain, which you always see in the background. And the more you progress, the, you know, the closer you get. And the thing with this game is there's only two or three functions. You can you can jump, you can fly. Um, and you can use your symbol like 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 musical hum. Well, you can't jump all the time. Not all the time. Well, it depends on what situation. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that that's what I'm. Yeah. And 
the, there's not really a story to this. Well, there's somewhat is with certain cutscenes, but it's the story is you can probably interpret it in your imagination. Mm -hmm. The game is pretty much about the journey that you make through. And the way the multiplayer works is unlike you've ever seen before, because you'll meet other players who are also along their journey in their own campaign, and you might come across them. But here's the thing. They don't show who they are. You cannot hear them speak through mic. The only way of communicating is through that particular hum uh, that you use. That's your only way of communication. So, and the game is not that short, but oh, the game is not that long. It's kind of short. First time players might be, uh, can get it done within three hours. I got it done like three, like three, three and a half hours. Um, I did my speed run and I did it in the white robe, which you can only unlock by running through these, um, these, these symbols, these sigils that extend, uh, expands your, uh, your tag that, that, yeah. that goes around you. This allows you to fly, uh, and go leaps and bounds longer. Now, for let me say this right now. Now, as much as I admire Roger Eber, he did say one thing that was absolute bullshit. Oh God! He said that, and he also Brian uh, Brad Bird also said this as well. He said that video games are not art. Yeah, well, that's bullshit. a bunch of horseshit. Well, obviously they have never played this game because this game is a work of art it's the definition of a work of art if you ask me this movie this game is spellbinding it's filled with awe and wonder and just beautiful it's like poetry in motion mm -hmm. and it makes the game work it's not like okay you know it's like if you just you only have two functions uh if you only have two functions how does it get stale well what keeps it from that is the level design because there's certain level portions that are far different from one another. And I'm trying to think what else I can go over. I mean, only problem with the game is, like I said, it's really short. But then again, it, it, it doesn't it, need to be longer. It doesn't. It doesn't need to be longer because then it will overstay its welcome. This is a game that everybody <laughs> needs to play. It is magnificent. It's full of just beauty and just like it's just awe-inspiring. And not to mention, I have to add on, it's the kind of game that we need right now with the times that we're in. It mm. really is. Yup. <laughs> I've been in, like, what, three times already? I want to go in for a fourth time. And, and Gary, what are, you, what are you going in your face? He has a towel on his face. That's, or like, call, that's called his nose, you <laughs> sensitive prick. <laughs> I don't think that's what he exactly <laughs> meant. <laughs> Gary, what are you looking at? Huh? What are, you, what are you looking at? I'm just listening. And what and what do you have to match with its overall beauty of its looks is its score. The score oh. is magnificent. It's just, it's the perfect touch when it comes to something that's fun and exciting to where it's just like uh, a certain aspect that hits you in the gut. That's oh, okay. course, the ending of the game. Dude, I I posted a tweet on Twitter saying if I had the chance to play this on IMAX screen, I would jump at the chance. And IMAX, the the Twitter page loved my tweet, and they 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 just were like, "Aww." Now on my Facebook, I did do a playthrough in the when the white robe where you have to click all twenty one, where I collect all twenty one of the sigils because there's twenty one the entire game, and did a speed run because I try to beat within the hours. So I can keep the recording. Because your DVR on the PS4 only grows up to an hour, and I barely did it. <laughs> Fifty nine forty eight. So, everybody, go play Journey. Really, it's a phenomenal game to say the least. Games like this, Limbo, Inside, Shadow of the Colossus. Speaking of Shadow of the Colossus, mm. Shadow of the Colossus. Now, this isn't some HD reboot, uh, HD reboot or remaster version, kind of like what the PS3 was. No. This is made by Blue Point, who browsed, you know, the Uncharted games. This is a legit remake built from the ground up. So let me ask you this. Would you consider this to be like a PS4 a PS4 game at that point, since it is a remake? In a way, yes. Okay, that's all I want to know. Because there has been so many improvements made upon these PS2 and PS3 versions of Shadow of the Colossus in terms of its visual design. First of all, the game comes off looking like if it's a Final Fantasy game. And that's mm -hmm. a good thing. And if you've seen the before and after, 
Yeah, <laughs> Romy's the Colossus shadow. Dude, it's night and day how it looks. It really is. Dude, like I said, everything was built. It's whole new game engine, game mechanics, and everything. Also, some of the controls have been fixed, such as jump. Is it the triangle button? Is the X button? Thank God. <laughs> And a couple other things as well. The bow and arrow is more. It's in the targeting. It's way better. Um, and the overall like physics are far more sublime. And also, mm -hmm. with the PS2 games, there was a little bit of frame rate. This is silky it's smooth, buttery right? smooth game. Buttery plan, smooth, man. like like. Curtains match the drapes. God damn it. By the way, if you thought it looked good on the regular PS4, oh man, on the Pro. Fuck! It looks. It would blow your mind how good it looks. And you. <laughs> <laughs> and and part of the thing. What is Shadow of the Colossus? Okay, so it's based on the trilogy, based on that trilogy uh, with Eco and the Last Guardian. I like Romy's bald head. Yep, I shaved the last night. Suki smooth, Suki smooth <laughs> like pancake. Okay, and, Gary, what are you on mute? Huh? Oh no! What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? I'm really not doing anything. So, Shadow of the Colossus focus on an individual named Wander, who, with his horse um, Agro, he goes to this shrine in the Forbidden Lands. Why? Because he brings this woman who looks like she's passed away to the shrine in, in order to resurrect her back to life, no matter what the cost. And he meets up with uh, Dorman. Who says he can make a promise to him that he can bring her back to life if he goes around the Forbidden Lands and destroys the 16 Colossi that roams around. And basically, this game is you and your horse capadre search out for all 16 Colossi and defeat them. It's it, like you say, it's similar to a Bosch Rush. It's much more than that. Think of this game. As this generation's Mike Tyson's punch out, to where there's a multiple upon multiple amount of boss battles, each have their own characteristics, their own look, the design. Each one's like a puzzle for you to solve and how to defeat them, and you just take it from there. This is one of the best remakes I have ever played. I agree. Uh, and I did platinum it, by the way. So <laughs> rubbing in, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> fucking dickhead. <laughs> Look at this fucking guy. Yeah, I know that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> but it's like, really, dude? Really? Anyways, keep going. Yeah. And the b things that are great about this game. First of all, each colossus. There's there's so much variety, and there's a lot more. Um, there's a lot more. Things added on to the game, so actually you can try to find these silver coins that unlocks a blade. And the new game plus is a good feature. Uh, you got the time attack mode. I think similar to this one, except this one's way better. Um, if I do have flaws, here's my okay, my critiques. Number one, just like I've had a problem with the PS2 and PS3 version, the camera. Hmm. When you're trying to fight a colossi, sometimes the camera can be in the way. And yeah, it makes no sense. It can be a nuisance. You're trying to move it, but it won't work. It works against you, and it blocks your vision. It can be a fucking pain in the ass. And the other one is the controls. They take a while to get used to. Surprisingly enough, I actually didn't have an issue with the camera when I was playing it. Oh, wow, really? I, I, I actually didn't have an issue. No, I really didn't have an issue with it. <laughs> wow, it's like if you see my playthrough when I'm going up against the 13th Colossi and I did that speed run on hard mode, and after I beat the, destroy the, shigil, the sigils, you can see like that that uh, part of the the colossal like, block in the camera and I don't know where the hell I was. Uh, okay. shit like that. Um, <laughs> a, a nuisance. And if you're wondering with the story, let's just say that I believe this is a spiritual predecessor to Eco. I wouldn't be surprised if so. It makes total sense. So Yes, this was available for PSN Plus for, uh, for free. Uh, if you in the, check it out, if you never play Shadow of the Colossus, you're missing out one of the best games on the PS2. I I'm think not, one of the greatest games ever, if you ask me. 
and it contains some of the greatest boss battles. And speaking of boss battles, here are my top five favorite and least favorite. Now, I do have my number one least favorite and my number one favorite. So here we go. I'll go over the favorite first. First one is Gaius. Gaius is the third Colossi. He was the poster boy for Shadow of the Colossus. Like when oh, he, when the, 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 the guy with the big ass sword, right? Oh, the huge sword. Yeah, and he just like swings and hits you. Like he was like the one you're just looking like, oh shit, you know. Um, he can't. Excuse me. He can't be a pain in the ass. He says when he just shakes the fuck out of you nonstop. But yeah, there's a reason why he's. What the fuck, Gary? What the hell are you doing, boy? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And the way you're pronouncing it for guys, you sound biased. <laughs> Get it? You Gaius. you would just <laughs> Guys, I just know you, should, you need to have your mic privileges taken away. <laughs> yeah, Gaius, and you're about the size of a hippopotamus. Okay. <laughs> hippopotamus and guys don't rhyme. Oh well. Uh Gaius? next one. Next well, your ass is like a hippo. Next one. Avion. This is a, I've seen this on a lot of people's favorite. This is the fifth Colossite and the first one you take on who's airborne. Oh, that's right. Yeah. This is like that, I imagine it. Huh? I said with a name like that, I imagine so. That's the one that flies over water, right? Well, you okay, you have to get onto a platform and he's just yeah. sitting there minding his own business. He's shooting an arrow and he's like, all right, motherfucker. And he dives in at you. That's what I'm thinking of. And yeah. You gotta jump on him and hang on tight. So good. What the hell, Gary? Oh my god, Gary, you fucking boob. Uh, next one, Cenobia. This is there's two like smaller colossi where they act like they act like fucking pit bulls in a way. The the other one, I'll get to that in a little bit. This one is actually awesome. It's like a Rube Goldberg effect. That's the one that that's one you find later on in the game. It's yeah. number 14. Next one. The last one, Malice, the 16th Colossi. Oh, God. This... What the fuck, Gary? Town called Malice. Gary, Gary, be quiet! No. Okay. You stop that. Here we go. You orangutan hemorrhoid. <laughs> you quit it. You quit it, boy. Nothing. Stupid. Oh, God. Nothing. Malice is the final boss in the game, and he pretty much sets the tone. With this, with the, and I'm not gonna, don't give it away what it is, but let's just say something happens and it sets the tone throughout the entire fight and it's, and it breaks your fucking heart. Chocolate waffle coral bells. <laughs> you have a fucking mm. Mickey in the chat. He's the one who said it. Legends of the Hidden Accent. Oh my god. And to me, my to me, this is not only the best boss in the game, this is one of the greatest bosses in video game history, and that of course is Felix. Felix is the thirteenth Colossus. He's like that big sand dragon. I just saying out of Game of Thrones, I swear. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's the brother. biggest Colossus in the game and he's the peaceful one too. And the way you go up against him, it's like Avion on steroids. It's fucking great. I thought he was the high fire of the Lucha Bros. Shut the fuck up. Now, for my least favorite For, okay, first one, Hydras. Hydras is that electric eel catfish. I one. hated that one so much. The reason, he's simple, but he's he's a durational. Um, he takes a while to fight. Yeah. He, he is, next one, this is the most pain in the ass fucking uh, one to fight. Solosius. Number is that the 11. sandworm one? No, no, oh. that that's uh dirge. I hate the, the sandworm other. one so much. Wow, I actually like that one. Uh, Solosi is that one where you have to sh you know, scare him with fire and he just charges at you nonstop and he can get you in a nonstop like loop where he can just keep hitting you and you can't That's get That's right. Him. Yeah, I know who you're oh, talking about. Oh, motherfuckers, a pain in the ass. Yeah. Wait, Gary, say... <laughs> oh, my... Wait, say... Wait, skippity boppity boopity? Oh, fuck. Skippity boppity boopity? Jesus, okay. Next one... The fifteenth Colossi, Argus. Why? Because he doesn't want to fucking cooperate with you, and sometimes his AI can be a little skewy, and he just go on and does his own bullshit. And 
you don't know how to find them at first because it doesn't teach you certain aspects of the game. Like, I didn't know I was supposed to do this. Um, next one, Phaedra. Phaedra is that horse-looking one. Hmm. He is also one of those duration bosses that can take forever. But I learned a speed-running trick that you can beat him a lot faster, and it skips you from hiding underground for you to jump on top of him. Oh, yeah, that's... um. Um, boss are on, uh, on. However, I figured out a way to where if you lure him to one direction, the way he walks, he will automatically get hit by the guys and you can flip him over with these. My least favorite fight of the game is number 12, uh, Pelagi, uh, Pel Pelagia. That's how you pronounce the name. Pelagia is the 12th Colossite that's that's in the water and he's got the teeth on his head. <laughs> he's got what? the what on his head? He's got like these fucking teeth and shit on his head. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you said teapot. <laughs> I thought you said teapot. Wow. Look at you. I thought you said teapot. Motherfucker, I have every right to be an asshole. You've been a fucking. He does. <laughs> Talk me for the past three episodes. I'm going to make it four if you don't be quiet. No, I have every right to be upset. I have every single right as my constitutional amendment rights here in this country. And no, I don't have a red card system. By the way, how's your chair doing in Office Office Max Heaven? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, uh Pelagia, I find I got a Update. I got a time of five minutes and twenty seconds, but the recording got five minutes thirty. This fucking boss is so goddamn tedious, and he's worse than um Agris, to where sometimes his AI will just wander about and he won't cooperate with you. Yeah, it's fucking sugar. What the fuck, guy? Why are you smelling the damn box? What smelling it? I saw you smelling the box. What smelling the box? This is the booty. That's smelling a box. God, you fucking why? Turkey. Why would you smell a box? You wonder why? It's because I am bored. I got nothing to contribute. I'm upset. <laughs> What's not my fault? That's not my I'm fault. I'm upset. <laughs> Are you upset, Boo Boo? I am upset. Well, that's oh, not my fault. Uh, hey, okay, this is true. Um, according to the uh, the uh, the main director of the game. He originally wanted to have 48 Colossi in the game. I'm glad he didn't. <laughs> but then he cut it down to 24. Mm. They originally were going to have 24, but then then decided to choose the 16 and the later 8, and the other 8 would have been scrapped. One of them was like a spider design, and there was, uh. another, yeah, yeah, there was a couple <laughs> other unique designs as well. Yeah, he's like, no. Wait, what? The, the, the way the way you looked at the monitor when Romeo had spider, you're just like hell no. Eat apple checks. Um, and I'm just gonna leave this one the last. Okay, there's an upcoming game that's gonna be happening, and it involves me, Alex, and the great and Lucas. It's gonna be wrestling trivia, and there's a catch. If Lucas comes in dead last, he has to watch the hottie and the naughty. Oh God, yes. I'm hopeless, I believe. Yeah, I am. And this is going to be all wrestling trivia hosted by Gary, which he better not fuck me over. Well, all my know, all everything I'm going to be putting down is going to be hard, easy, and it's going to be fair. Gary, I hope you do fuck him over. No, I'm yeah. actually going to be very, I'm actually gonna be very fair with us. <laughs> hard questions, easy questions. It's going to be very fair. As for Alex, I haven't figured out or decided what he needs to watch because some of the bad movies or bad shows he's already seen. <laughs> To put him through hell again. <laughs> oh, God. So, that's a little thing. Those are pretty much all my talkers, mostly. Oh, let me go over this, because this is important. Billy Mitchell. Hmm. Yeah, you know for him for playing, you know, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong. He was known as one of the best arcade players in the 1980s. And he held many world records, especially one for Donkey Kong. However, just like his butt buddy from Twin Galaxies that he was running behind the scenes, Mr. Activision, Billy Mitchell was caught being a fucking fraud and a cheater. Thus, was exposed and had all of his records removed. 
And now Billy Mitchell is owning up to that name of being a real cocksucker by suing. You okay, Gary? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> by suing the individual who called him out on his bullshit. Let me go down and let me see this shit because you're not going to fucking believe this. Number right. two will blow your tits clean off. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Am I sounding clickbaity enough? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Okay. Uh, give me a minute. I'm, like I said, I know it's on my Twitter and I shared no it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Oh no. Oh. What did we learn? I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> did you, Gary? Did you? Check no. your, you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. I wasn't even expecting that. Far. You better check yourself before the wiggity wiggity wreck yourself. You know, I didn't give a warning when I actually have a fart, but this case, I didn't even expect that one. It just fucking slid out like it was butter. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking like border, border. creamy border. That's what it was. <laughs> that is I'm that upset. is awful. I'm upset. I'm I am so. What are you not upset? Yeah, well, right. I, when I have to fart, my I usually give a warning when I have to fart. Uh, for this particular case, yeah, and there goes I bear it, bros. Judge my farts like he always does. But again, asshole. when are you not upset? <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, he's upset. Look at this guy. I mean, it's already bad enough that Billy Mitchell threatened to sue the Guinness Book of World Records. And now, seven days ago, he threatened to sue Twin Galaxy over disqualify, even though it was him and uh, Mr. Activision, who was mm -hmm. running shit behind the scenes because they're fucking butt buddies. Oh, God. Okay, here we go. Accused King of Kong cheater Billy Mitchell sues uh, the his high score back and for $1 million. Dollars. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And he was stripped of his Guinness Book of World Records title as it was discovered that he has been cheating. The disgraceful former world record holder vowed to prove his innocence with a mountain of evidence, including witness statements. Yeah, you know, Mr. Activision claimed he got a 5.51, and yet that's not been that's not possible, thanks to Omni Gamer. The lowest you can get in that game is a five. Wait, there's feedback? Really? Or what for a moment? Wait, I mean, I'm, in... pre I'm pretty sure it's gone now. No, I think you're good right now. Okay, unlike um, uh, Mr. Activision, who claimed he had a 5.51, and the uh, there was no legit evidence, and on the game, it proved that you can only get a 5.57. Hmm, hmm. Mr. Activision, and all your other claims are bullshit. So. Billy Mitchell, in his legal representation, actually filed the Twin Galaxy lawsuit back in April 2019. They had to file within a year to comply with a California statute of limitations regarding to filing a defamation lawsuit. <laughs> he said that the, the disgraced former world record holder demonstrated impossibility of original, unmodified Donkey Kong arcade hardware true to produce specific board transitions images shown in the videotape recordings of those adjusticated performances wait i'm why am i getting roboto really you, i'm not you're, you're fine not. right now yeah you're fine wait romy pulled a dsp the fuck you say <laughs> yeah, yeah you don't sound you don't sound roboto at all on my end i don't know you're why fine. okay you're fine um so yeah billy mitchell fuck <laughs> off Okay, you got exposed. Fucking deal with it. Quit being a bitch. And just go on and keep making your goddamn hot sauce. <laughs> I mean, I will say the video feed is pixelated, but otherwise your audio is good. Oh, uh, yep. hey, Gary, uh, kick me off and bring me back on again. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> okay. That's, that's actually better. That's, Yay. Better. that's okay. better. Go ahead. The rest of the show is yours. Um, I don't want to talk yeah. anymore. All right, so um, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have a game because I want to space things out. Next week yeah. we will have some games. Yeah. 
All right, so for the rest of my topics, I what shall I go into? The Doom Eternal controversy? Should I go over my review of Spec Ops The Line? Or should I go into Game Ranks' top 10 games, sequels that, that were terrible? That okay. Okay. So, I want to make some... Uh, pred- yeah, uh, Zelda 2, The Adventures of Link, uh, Devil May Cry 2. So, Castle I want to... <laughs> I want to remind everybody, this is not my list. This is a video that Game Ranks put out last night. And they put down their top ten. Now, like, I don't think these are in particular order, but they named these ten particular mm-hmm. video game sequels that are worse than the original. So, starting off with the, with the number ten, Star Wars: The Force Unleashed Two. I haven't played it, but I've played the first one. And it's a lot of fun. I knew something was up when they announced that Starkiller was a clone this time around. Um, number nine, Driver Three or Drive Three Er, which was essentially the Grand Theft Auto <laughs> ripoff. Yeah. Uh, number eight, Medal of Honor Warfighter, which I never played. Uh, number seven, I can agree with this one, Need for Speed Payback. It's not good. Um, oh, they, sent, they essentially tried to make it, oh, well, it was essentially, they tried to essentially combine Need for Speed with Fast and Furious. Yeah. Number six, Postal 3. Oh, yeah. Because Postal 2 was, <laughs> it was so unpolygetic, but it was so it was so fucking ridiculous. Postal 3 went against everything that Postal 2 was. They are making Postal 4 right now. It is an extreme, they are, it's an early access and they're developing with community feedback. And actually on the Steam page, someone was like, is this going to, is this going to suck away Postal 3? And the developer said, fuck no, this won't be bad. <laughs> is this, is this the same, like running with scissors, the same people? Yes, yeah, same company, same company. I know Civi, um. Uh, Civi 11 would be happy to hear that. <laughs> oh, God. Number five. Haven't played this one, but I think everyone can agree on this one. Bomberman Act Zero. I never play that. Oh, God. From what I heard, it, from what I saw from gameplay, oh, God. Uh, number four. I never played this one. GoldenEye Rogue. Actually, no, I have played this. GoldenEye Rogue Agent. Where essentially, where it seems like you could kill James Bond in the beginning, and you don't play as James Bond in the game. That's about as bad as making James Bond a woman. Oh, wait. Well, that, well, that's the thing. They're not. It's. It, it looks like a spy versus spy element. That's all I'm gonna say in terms of that. Uh, number f- number three. I agree with this completely. Banjo Kazooie nuts and bolts. Oh wow! Wait. Uh, I know. I know there was Banjo Tooie, which was mm-hmm. just about as good, if not better. Yeah, nuts and bolts. Uh, yeah. They. How do you fuck up a Banjo Kazooie again? Enough said. Number two. I haven't played this one actually. Dynasty Warriors 9. Nope. <laughs> oh, Lord. <Wow. laughs> oh, Shane knows it. <laughs> Most of these games I haven't even played. I'm, yeah. Uh, the Dynasty Warriors 9, I mean, I heard that 8 was actually great, but 9 just was terrible. Um, it, it was an experiment, and then it just, like, I don't know. It just it just, was just a failed experiment. Or something. Oh, I enjoy playing with my nuts and bolts. God damn it, Psycho Mike. Number one, I never played this one, but I know how bad it is just from hearing about it. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5. Oh. Touch a disappointment. Well, okay, hold up a second. You, you, wait, Romy, you are the angry bird. Yeah, I'm fucking Terrence. <laughs> uh, the fuck i it? will actually make my own top five worst video game sequels okay, i, will I was thinking that. of like just like the, the sequel the main sequel not like a could like oh no like, like the continuation sequel yeah like that's what they did um but oh, i will I, go into my own i would put like i said don't Make cry 2 would be on there fucking zelda 2 would be on there castlevania 2 would be on there i would say the mass effect 3 only because the ending is disappointing oh only the because. ending the ending's fucking ass uh, but yeah, that's their top 10. Now, I'm going to go into oh, my no, review of Spec Ops The Line. So, uh, I'm going to save Doom Eternal for last. Um, so, Spec Ops The Line came out back in 2012. I know Owen loves this game, into which I can almost say it's one of the best games of all time, just for a couple of flaws. So, Spec Ops The Line is supposed to be the reboot of Spec Ops series, and to which you play as... Well, you... You follow a group of three characters that go to Dubai to find this character named Captain Conrad and midst of a civil war going on because in Dubai people are thirst they start they're uh, essentially they're thirsting for water and the water is essentially being kept from them the entire time. And you play as a character like Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> kinda like that, yeah. So essentially what they're doing is they're trying to find this captain, but as oh, I, but as they go through Dubai they encounter uh, these Hold up the, give me a second here. Um oh. I want to hear this. Fuck off, dick! Okay, I should work. 
<laughs> so what happens is that uh, if they're third person shooter ever, really more than Gears Three, interesting. Um, but um, essentially what happens throughout this game is that you f- you you go on this journey, feeling like you're you're trying to you know evacuate people, you're trying to save people. But the more you play through this game, the more that let's say the act the consequences of your actions show. Like for example, there's a scene involving white phosphorus, and it is. It's graphic to say the least. I'll, I'll go as a so far as to saying this is one of the darkest games ever played in terms of narrative. Um, it's a game How would you compare it to uh, Manhunt, the first Manhunt game? I have to play Manhunt again. Oh, that is some dark shit. Um, but um, but let me just say this: I was actually talking to you guys about this last night. I was I was playing this, but and in the second to final chapter of the game, every time you die, you encounter these title screens, and the game actually makes you feel like crap. <laughs> it, it's like that's the goal. Because like, at one point it says, at one point it says, you still feel like a hero at this point. And I actually got a screenshot from the game. I'll actually, Harry, I'll actually uh, tell you guys. What um, in the fuck were you doing? Fucking Mickey, send me a goddamn monkey! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you show me the photo, Gary. <laughs> 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 fucking monkey! Show, oh, go ahead. Oh, While well, Allison gets the whatever, uh, it, it's it's loading. Up. Give me, okay. give it one second. Okay, here, here we go. Here we go. Here, this is what it is. All right, listen to this. To kill for yourself is murder. To kill for your government is heroic. To kill for entertainment is harmless. They literally have this at its title screen. And amongst other things, like it's a game that really wants you to think about the actions that war has. I was gonna say it's it's a very anti-war. Oh, it game. is. Although the thing is, it's not very preachy about it, which I like about it because they mm-hmm. do have a great storyline and how the game <laughs> is. What are you laughing about now? It's about the monkey, ain't it? Oh, it is. Yeah, probably. Is, <laughs> is that Donkey Kong? <laughs> yes, uh, Luke Nukem. I can agree with you. Man is dark because the violence in Manhunt is very dark but the storytelling and the subject matter and spec ops is something that will make you like think oh fuck because i'm not kidding but by the end of the game i just thought shit like the, what the white phosphor scene you like i was telling Romy and gary about it last night i just thought i had to really pause the game for a couple of seconds and there's actually so the best way i can describe this game the darkness of it so remember that remember the mission no rush into modern warfare 2 yeah. Yeah. Basically, this game kind of takes it to where you have no choice into killing a person. Yeah, uh, it's yeah, it's a very strong scene. Oh yeah, yeah. Ba- basically, what happens is that someone that you know dies, and what happens afterwards is like you're trying. You think you have a way to get the situation, but you have no choice but to do what you have to do. And it's heartbreaking. I had to only really pause the game for almost a minute because I had to just reflect on everything that I had done. But in turn, as far as flaws go, the gameplay is generic. It doesn't do anything really to stand out in terms of third-person shooters. You know, it's you know cover-based system, reload, taking out your enemy troops and all that stuff. It's nothing really out there. However, I will say, while well, the graphics don't really hold up, the art style does hold because it's very, it's a very bright color palette to say the least um and for again that like i said takes came out year ago eight years ago the design of dubai looks amazing and the weather effects are absolutely amazing um yeah gameplay isn't that great the voice acting minus nolan north who by the way nolan north in the game is absolutely amazing in it uh, he actually oh, voices yeah. the, he voices the main character yeah um and uh yeah, voice acting is not the greatest from time to time but other than that i would say the game is a i would say it's an eight out of ten game um, it's not that long of a game either. Is it's it? not. It's only about like four to five hours. But honestly, <laughs> it's a game that honestly, it the 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 length is perfect because I feel like if it would have gone any longer than that, I think it would have. I'll say it's welcome personally, like kind of like how Journey is with three hours. Yeah. Uh, but it's a great third person shooter. I have it on PC. Yeah, she and I have played. I play it on PC. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great game. Um, it's it's a game that will definitely. Have you reflecting on what you've done and after you've been it? All right, so I'm sorry, I'm still laughing. Even Big Rock, Big Rock's dying because of that fucking, that fucking grin. All right, Donkey Kong. <laughs> See, oh, I actually never played the multiplayer. I, although the hard the multiplayer was not that great, and, and uh, back off. 
and one of the most underrated games i agree it's a game that i feel like that everyone should play despite of how um dark it feels especially in the end oh my god and there's actually multiple endings there's multiple endings of the game there's multiple endings by the way because i know it's still partially like er, somewhat early march i know march may excuse me jesus yeah what are the PS Plus free game exclusives? Like it's, it's like Sim City Skies and Farming Simulator. Just yeah. oh my god, dude! But it's it's like you know what? I'm not complaining because I I don't need those games. I have plenty of games to play anyways. Uh, yeah, there's a game I like to play. It's called Patty Cake. <laughs> I, Do you play with that? Monkey? I was waiting for that, Gary. <laughs> That monkey can go fuck right off. Hold on, are you gonna, are you gonna spank the monkey? <laughs> I gotta share. This. <laughs> I'm gonna shock the monkey. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mick Rock. I don't know why this is so fucking funny. Okay, here it comes, uh, Austin and Shane. Right, this, what he said. Said. this is what he sent him, and this <laughs> fucking cock sucking bullshit, dude. It's <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm sorry. Oh, let me see. It's the face he makes too, and Gary just like, like if he says he sees some like weird goofy shit like that, it sets him off. Like wow. when, I was playing, when I was playing Cuphead, there were certain animals, he, oh, certain creatures, like or characters. He's like, what the fuck is? <laughs> it's definitely goofy to say the least. Oh shit! God damn, dude, his eyes. His fucking eyes are so crossed like that. He don't know what he's looking at. Oh, God. All right, so. Face. And so for my final topic for today, um, this breaks my heart, to say the oh. least, because it goes over Doom Eternal. Now, uh, Romy and I can both agree on this. Doom Eternal is one of the greatest soundtracks ever. I fucking love this, dude. This soundtrack is just banging. It, it's, it's, this, if you want, if you want a great adrenaline burst, Play the soundtrack for Doom Eternal, to say the least. Mm -hmm. um, so there was controversy with the soundtrack because... Oh, um, yeah. The, OT, well, uh, the, the, uh, the OST, excuse me. Because the, the game... <laughs> the, the soundtrack within the game sounds amazing. But if you listen to the the official soundtrack, like how the this music comes off, it, it th that power doesn't come off with... What, let me let me just say this. the the twelve There's 12 tracks that sound amazing, <laughs> But the other tracks, they're missing uh, a nice, not only really nice little mix, but they're missing a little bit of bass, a little bit of power to it. And unfortunately, there's a little bit of controversy because a lot of people noticed that a lot of it was heavily compressed. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, but there is a reason behind. There's a, re it. There's a reason. A Thank lot of you people took a step before this mm -hmm. article, by the way, because a lot of people were going after because because someone noted that. Uh, the BFG division, which is my, which is in my eyes the best track from Doom 2016, you know, Rip and Tear is a, is a close second for me. That's like that's the that you flip them and that's what mine. Yeah, are. <laughs> and uh, people are notice one person noticed that BFG division 2020 sounded compressed compared to BFG division, and Mick Gordon said, "I didn't, I didn't mix that, and I wouldn't have done that." Mm -hmm. And then someone said to him, "Are you gonna work on the next Doom game?" And then Mick said, "I doubt we'll work together again." Right. Hold that thought. Gary, what the fuck are you doing? Well, I'll continue, then I will ramp. Because people are sending me fucking monkeys! <laughs> <laughs> you got monkeys on your back, Gary? No! I got these stupid-ass monkeys. You got this one motherfucker. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I shit myself, motherfucker... God damn! I'm starting with Psycho Mike. Go ahead, Austin. That's all right. It's I, I find this hilarious. Yeah, um, that's fucking, I'm sorry, Psycho <laughs> Mike said that. I had to see that photo. <laughs> oh god! But anyway, so then it got to a point where apparently people were attacking not just its software and Bethesda. Well, Bethesda. I mean, to be fair, Bethesda. It looked like they had no influence on Doom Eternal. That was just straight up its software. Um, well. They were attacking the sound. Uh, they were attacking the lead audio designer, Chad Massholder. Chad, to which, Chad to, yes. To which this is what I will say, okay. The, his tracks, okay, they don't have the same power that Mick Gordon has, but at the same time, for what he had to do, he did a damn good job. He really did. Well, what he had to, yes. Yeah. And folks, this isn't what it seems to be. It's not. Now, so this is, now, so 
Marty Stratton, the uh, executive producer of Doom Eternal, he was also uh, the co-game director of Doom 2016 with Hugo Martin, which, by the way, I just want to say it's software. They're known as one of the coolest developers Dude, out there. They, it's software. It's like I said, back when it was founded originally by Romero, uh, both Carmax, not related, and Tom Hall, and then, you know, American McGee, Sandy Peterson, uh, uh, Sean Green, and many others. Mm -hmm. Even John Romero said it, it was some of the best time I've ever had, and I loved working with those guys. And I want to say that Hugo Martin... Marty Stratton and everyone working at it's off for you guys are amazing and they they actually did a quick a quick, quick little plug here watch their reaction to a speed run of the game it's hilarious oh my god i it's a 27 minute speed run wait whenever gary shits himself <laughs> oh god i'm curious to see i'm curious to hear gary's reaction but anyway so so breathe buddy breathe so, oh god, boy. So Marty Stratton released a very lengthy letter to the Doom Committee on Reddit saying, "Hey, what you guys have been hearing, it's not true at all." No, it's just it's complete opposite, actually. So what happened? I'm not gonna read the entire letter because we're gonna be here forever if I do so. But to give you guys, uh, I'll go into some bits of it. So basically, what happened was that after Mick released what. Basically, what Mick said about not working with it again, people were attacking not only id, but Chad Massholder, the lead audio designer of Doom Eternal, because they believe that <sighs> Mick didn't have a damn hand, or that basically it said, okay, don't do this anymore, let us do, let's take care of the work, essentially, which wasn't true. And what happened was that basically, now I will say this it's software, right when the official soundtrack released, they didn't have Mick contracted it until the January before the game came out. And what happened was that they said, okay, we're going to have you contracted to at least release 12 tracks, which, which he did deliver 12 tracks. However, what? Mick, apparently Mick wanted to do more than 12 and not just that. Here's the thing, guys. Um, when it came upon the deadline, Mick said that he needed more time to do so. They gave him four to six extra well, weeks. Well, here's the thing. Mick said he needed four weeks. Ed granted him six weeks. Six! They actually, not, not and not only this, before this all happened, Ed actually not only wanted to pay him, but they wanted to give him a bonus pay because of how great his work was in the game, I'd imagine. Because, again, if you guys have played Doom Eternal, you'll know how amazing the soundtrack well, yeah, is. Yeah, like, Ed, his, his, um, did he do level three? Uh, I think, yeah, uh, I think he did actually, yes. Um, like I said, his, okay, no, uh, his tracks are without question the best ones from Doom Eternal. And I'll say this once again, the Cultist Space track, I have said this before, it reminded me of Old School Rob Zombie. That's how much I loved it. Um, but anyway, so coming up on the deadline, Mick asked not only for a couple more weeks, but because it was a bit more weak. I mean, the him and his team, him and his team were fine, but he... Oh, but it gave him more work. It, he need, apparently he needed more time to work. To which they said, "Okay, not a problem. We'll give you six weeks, and we'll actually give you the bonus so when you complete your tracks." And mm -hmm. and then those weeks come in later, still nothing. Although here's nothing. the thing, Mick said, "Okay, how about this? I'm going to do this working with Chad so that we can get the game tracks all together in time." And then, so at that point, uh, Marty said, okay, we'll do it. And the reason why the game tracks that Chad had sent in were heavily compressed is because Chad didn't have the raw files that Mick has. He had to do what was necessary to stick with the deadline. Mick Gordon was being very unprofessional, mm -hmm. especially that, that remark he made. They gave him six weeks, and he still couldn't get the job and done. Not just that, but Ed was being more than compliant and even oh, saying, yeah. hey, that they, they, not only did they give him six weeks, but they said, hey, we'll still give you your bonus payment. Still. What those mm -hmm. supposed to the, like, it, Ed is getting attacked over nothing, and I do want to hear what it's Mick Gordon has fault. to say. It's not their fault at all, and it's really... And I love Mick Gordon. I think he is uh, one of the best composers out there. I want to see him do a movie. I what, really do. What Mick Gordon... What Mick Gordon is to this Doom series for today is what Bobby Prince was to uh, Doom and a couple other games, or what Lee Jackson was to Rise of the Triads. Mm -hmm. It makes me wonder what are they going to do with the DLCs? 
And not just that, and also think about this, guys. A lot of the tracks that Mix sent in weren't combat tracks. They were more of ambient tracks. Yeah. And even Marty Stratum said himself, hey, um, I'm listening to the tracks you sent, and <coughs> I don't think Doom fans would like what you sent. And even and even uh, uh, Mick Gordon said this himself. If Doom fans don't like what you have, they'll burn your house down. <laughs> and he said this during a GDC conference, actually. Okay, and I'm, I've read this one name. I, I've talked about him many times when Gary and I played Doom because he did a lot, many, almost a good amount of the covers from the classic Doom games, and mm -hmm. he did the Rise of the Triads remake and a couple others. Uh, Andrew Hulshul. I listened to one of his tracks. I think he'd be a perfect fit. I, really I think, think he'd be phenomenal. Like he did amazing covers mm -hmm. for Doom and Doom Two. And yeah. Rise of the Triads and many, many others. I think he'd be great. I'm not sure if he will accept doing it, but if they get him on board, I think he's, I think he's perfect. As do I. And um, it's a damn shame that this all happened it's because fucking sad. Man. Because because uh, like you mentioned before, what Mick Gordon has done for the, these new Doom games, like he's a godsend for the new Doom games. He, is. he really is. Although unfortunately, due to unfortunately, I'm not getting his thing together his his business together and even though even though ed was more than happy to accommodate him yes, more than happy were. um like i said they were like they said okay we'll extend this we'll give you even more weeks that you need we'll give you the time that you need and we'll still give you your payments and we'll still and we'll give you even more so because because apparently i mean they wouldn't have hired him if they didn't like his work guys yeah. um but yeah, it's a dan and it's it's going to the extent that they're not going to work with them for the DLC, which sucks so much. I don't know who they're going to get. I just hope if it is Andrew Holshaw, I'll be fucking thrilled. But we don't know. Hey, wait, hey, Gar is that Tracer hey. from Overwatch? What? Mm, mm, that, rule thirty four. That, that, that looked like Tracer from you Overwatch. You were showing. Oh, it was in the last episode. What, of Shane? Can you uh -huh. stop that. <laughs> hey man, she, she man, Gary's she, trying to speak, guys. Gary's trying to speak. In that last episode of both was where I wanted to read an article about what they said with WWE 2K20. I found it. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, you know, what? I'm actually kind of I'm actually done with my with hey, my Gary. topics because you know, I just want to say it's a damn shame. Enough said. Yeah. Gary, <laughs> the photo. I saw <laughs> fucking monkey. Bring the kids on my camera. That jack sucking bullshit. Look, Nukem sent me this photo. Is this when Gary shits himself? It is a picture of this fucking monkey. monkey. <laughs> I don't want to see any more monkeys. Fuck monkeys. I don't like them. Except lemurs. I love lemurs. Lemurs are adorable. Them. Fuck every other monkey. No wonder Anyways. you're a fan of Planet of the Apes. <laughs> <laughs> Here, literally, the article's right there. So this is from their good mm. and ugly section. This is what they said, and I quote, A month after the launch of 2K's NBA 20, 2K20 was married by bugs and disc content, developer visual concepts come back with WWE 2K20, which has sparked its own outcry among fans. Players have been complaining of crashes, graphics, and wrestler mods that are the worst than previous years, physics, bugs, Features not working and more. A patch is planned, but it won't be out till another few weeks. Well, this magazine came out, Brian. I've actually played the. I've seen the patches, dude. The patches don't even fix it. <laughs> we released like maybe fucking ten gox fucking bugs to try and fix it. I can't even do multi man matches. Interesting. Wow. Two K game handled solely by visual concepts and not co developed by long time series developer Ukes. When Ukes was doing these games, THQ and all that, the games were great. But once 2K got a hold, it was just a downward spiral. But that's enough of that. It's just, I just figured it'd be a nice little article to read. Whose turn is it? Mine? Yeah. Speaking of that, I might as well um, talk a little more of at least what I thought and what I saw in that trailer of WWE 2K Battle. <laughs> so, this fucking trailer, dude. I watched this motherfucker... I first thing I see is that these assholes, the wrestlers in the ring, their bodies are mutilated, are fucking mutilated. They're small, they're tiny, and their heads are just as bigger than their bodies. Do you want to know what this game looks like? I shit you not. These motherfuckers look like characters you would see in Celebrity Deathmatch. That's how badly butchered it is. It's worse, man. I love Celebrity Deathmatch too. So far from the graphics of this game, it looks like it's going to be something that's over the top silly, ridiculous, and just an abomination to the wrestling games that we all knew originally. 
I mean, I don't mind seeing a silly wrestling game once in a while. But at least make it fun. <laughs> this one just looks so ridiculous. As a Victor put it, 2K plastic surgery. There you go. 2K plastic surgery. All right. I'll come mm-hmm. up for that. Um, I don't really have anything lined up except showcases cereal boxes, dude. Yay! Showcase cereal. the mon- Showcase the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> we want monkeys. We, we want, want monkeys. monkeys. <laughs> we want monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for just to throw a bunch of things at the webcam at this point. Yeah, again. You want monkeys? Okay. I want oh, monkeys. I, hear it. I knew it. Yeah. I want. I meant the app. I meant the animal, but okay. That's all I got for monkeys, but okay. They're great doormats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh shit, Gary! Right, be- uh, I can't believe Gary didn't lose his mind after I said that. I ain't curious. So, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I said to those um, albums you hold? I go, "Wow, those are great doormats." <laughs> Wow. <laughs> would you Don't like be gro- mean to the poor boy. Would you like a grilled cheese sandwich? Can, can I at least get a piece of slack every so often? Gary. He's, G- Gary's doing oh. good. I've been getting abused. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Gary. Oh, oh, Gary. 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 I deserve a piece of pie, too, you know. Gary. I apologize. I, Gary. I, I'm sorry. That better. Mm. All right, Sarah. Okay, Bart. that's better. If I get okay, oh, okay, that's nothing. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you all my cereal boxes, what you think, and all that other stuff. So let's go ahead and go over them all. First off, let me showcase this one because this cereal box alone, no that- cereal. I thought I wanted to add it due to the fact that this box is just okay. Hey, Gary, do me a favor. Oh, Bill and Ted, nice. Um, make your screen big while you put. Uh, make your screen the biggest way you put us three. There Perfect. we go. There we go. See, see, second unit assistant director, whatever. Bill and Ted. <laughs> yes, Bill Ted assistant I, director. See, series like these, I miss these types of series to where not only was it creative, it was fun. You mm-hmm. had nice little things to read on the back of the box as well. Like this, for example. Look at this kid right here. Win your own phone booth. By the way, I actually had to construct this box all together with some tape, so it was kind of a motherfucker to do it but i got it man look at that look how color boxes like cereal boxes aren't as colorful these sure, days they, well it depends on which one it is but i can see where you're coming from but this one you get to win prizes Bill and Ted, i bet you it's better than the nes game <laughs> oh god <laughs> anyway, you just said that. you're sorry and all of a sudden you're being a dick again no he's talking about the nes game oh, yeah, you never mind. Mind. you're not hear what i just said austin i I apologize. Yeah, you know, you know, also fucking, fucking this uh, gym guy. He's always mean to me too. But anyway, <laughs> <what's up? laughs> I got you all know this. Oh hey. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some good old fucking sugar bear. That sugar bear. Everybody loves sugar bear. It's yeah. Delicious. The I video. Think I think it's better than honey smackers. Ooh, oh, you know what? Okay, they're kind of similar, and yet yeah, they have their own unique taste. That's like that. Yeah. You know what the truth is? Hey, I, hey, Ma, I was right. Gold, oh uh, no, honeycomb is healthier because sugar bear cereal is the highest sugar per. Um, that explains why it tastes good too. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> By the way, just to let you know, folks, a uh, few of us here are cereal junkies. Yeah, we're cereal jun- cereal junkies. Cereal inside the. <clears throat> You can watch that, uh, but yeah, we're cereal. But we're cereal junkies. And by the way, this this habit started because of the program. So that's that. Next cereal box. The, it actually started because of the infamous Romeo. Uh, well, the box question started because of the series, but the whole series started because of some because of a fucking joke. Yeah, so it, exactly. Anyways, next cereal box, folks. I've had multiple cereals in my time. And usually when I like a cereal, I'm like, eh, it's okay. But I've never been more disgusted with a cereal in my whole entire life. And this is a bit of a shock <laughs> because it's from Pulse. Pulse has made some of the best. Pulse and um, General Mills. 
this shit right here, though. Oh, right? God. Oh, I try to bullshit. sample all that. That shit's fucking awful. This Why? Is... Uh, huh? Why would anyone think that would actually be a good cereal? <laughs> it wasn't. Shano, I've tried this, dude. I, I've tried this show. It's but, the worst cereal I've ever in my life. It's but, sour. It's disgusting. The milk itself. <laughs> It tastes like curdle. The milk tastes like curdle. Oh, it's awful. Wait, Luke, shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's what makes it even worse with this cereal. Is that it makes the milk taste curdle. Yeah, this cereal is the one I gave a rare, rare F to. I gave this cereal a rare F. But I'm keeping the ball. <laughs> was the cereal version sour than sweet? <laughs> I was about to say the same thing, actually. That's pretty funny. Well, that's one of the greatest cereals ever. They made Reese's uh, into a cereal. That's some good. Yeah, that's, that's super good. No, and, and you know me. I don't like anything peanut butter. Hey, Gary, I'm going to send you a photo. Don't worry. It has nothing to do with fucking monkeys. All right. All right. Speaking of cereals, next one we got here. We'll save that one afterwards. Okay. This cereal I actually did try. Now, this was supposed to be a very weird rendition of um, of Jolly Rancher cereal. This time, General Mills made. I thought, you know what? Okay. This type of cereal, I never <laughs> even, even existed. Gary, look at the fucking fruits on the, on the box cover. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, micro, oh, Psycho Mike. <laughs> oh, my God. So, anyways... Gary, you look like that fucking blueberry on the side underneath that watermelon. He's like... <laughs> well, you gotta take a fucking picture of that, would you? Okay, so you got Jolly Rancher cereal. Now, I actually tried this. Believe it or not, this cereal was just okay. This cereal had the exact same type of taste that... This is a taste that Sour Patch Kids should have, but wasn't. So this one was actually not... It was more of a sweeter version of Fruity Pebbles. Hey, Gary, hold on. Hold on. Don't... No, wait. Hey, return the box. Gary, Gary, what you got? Show the fucking, show the fruits on that thing. Go close, close. Okay, you got one who's okay. One looks like he's on meth. One looks like he's on crack. One's stoned out of his fucking mind. <laughs> Look at the watermelon. He's like, mm -hmm. oh my god, mm, potatoes. The grapes, right? He's like, <laughs> yeah, the grape is doing this. <laughs> no interrupting, Gare Bear. I didn't even hear that. Good. Uh, I, feel, I feel like I just got graped in the air. I didn't, I didn't even hear that. Oh, I, I got that reference. <laughs> he grapes him. He grapes him in the mouth. <laughs> no more monkeys. No more monkeys. Next cereal here. Now, I try this one. Now, this particular cereal here, it kind of tastes like vanilla cake batter, believe it or not, this cereal. Uh, the, host, the Post Hostess Twinkie cereal. Hostess Twinkies. Well, you are a Twinkie. <laughs> so Emphasis that's on the twink. We, well, you know what they have in uh. common? They, bo they both love to be cream filled. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Well, with this particular cereal here, yeah, basically the snack cake golden child is not golden child is now a cereal. The creamy, cakey, golden goodness that has enhanced the masses for generations is now making its debut on your breakfast table. Now you can enjoy that as Enjoy all that classic flavor and new way of hostess. I would just eat a Twinkie straight up. I was gonna say, don't eat too many. You might go crazy. I do want to try the horny. <laughs> <cake. laughs> I I totally got where that. Yeah, oh, yeah folks, this is a true story. Uh, Harvey Milk, the guy who ran, he got killed by this one other. I forgot what his name was, and his defense was the Twinkie diet, and it worked. It actually worked. Yeah. Uh, gr great movie, too, by the way, Milk. Great Very movie. Very good movie. Go ahead, Gary. Anyways, it says right here, there's two other hostess ones. The do there's this donut one, <laughs> and then there's the horny born cereal. So <laughs> <there's that one. laughs> the horny boys! <laughs> You know what, Gary? If you're gonna kill, if you're gonna kill, <laughs> if you're gonna kill me, you can blame it on the Twinkie. It shows. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you look like you're carrying twins. Don't destroy the box. Don't destroy the box, Gary. Don't, don't destroy the box. Don't do like a yeah. The the horny boys. All right, next cereal I want to show. I'm just getting the big boxes. because I'm trying to neatly. Big boxes. Oh, I see a couple. Oh, this is gonna be good. Okay, next girl. Let's showcase this one right here. Rep the Reef oh, yeah. Reptar Serum. Now, Reptar I, cereal. 
I remember when I was a young boy, there was another reptile cereal I used to eat when I was a kid. <laughs> I don't know what you uh, was the little the the cereal was little shaped of reptile itself, and the milk turned green and it tasted really nice. This box right here was a revamped version of reptile cereal, but it's what happens to the side it looked like you beat the shit out of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how the hell that happened. But anyways, this particular cereal here, revamped fruit loops. Eh, I just only wanted to get it because I like collecting cereal boxes. I tried. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good collector. Well, what, Shane? I'm, I'm cracking up because of the first statement Gary just made. He said, when I, when I was a young boy, I was going to yell out, I played the silver ball. <laughs> 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 anyway, oh the who? God. Honestly? No? Nobody? So okay. ball, Brian, I must, dude, the fucking, I consider the who to be the greatest band to ever hit. The, it's not only the 60s, but rock and roll hit. I'll tell you one thing. If you go to Pawn Stars, you tell Rick Harrison that, he will love you. Dude, mm -hmm. I, I look like Rick Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, give, I'll you give you 10 bucks for it. I'll give you 25 bucks for it. <laughs> All right, next thing I got here, you know, I'm going to throw this box out and get a new one because the cereal is out because then the box is dead. Wait, shape. is that the good? Wait, is that the good? Uh, it's childhood. Oh well, because remember they remember how they changed the the, the formula yeah. and and then they went back to it. I was like, good. Guess what? They changed back to the fruity shapes are back of classic tricks. <laughs> this is, the thing is when they got rid of this particular one here and had those little circles. I never ate tricks since, but since they brought it back, I ate tricks again. And look, this here is my this right here. One of my favorite cereals as a kid. I feel bad for that rat because he just wants a bowl of that yummy uh, cereal. And those Wait, did you just say? Fuck. Did you just say rat? Rabbit. Rabbit. Oh, I thought you said rat. I was like, <laughs> throw me. I we're, all, just... we're all having listening problems today. No, apparently. I was gonna say, I was, if you said rat, I was gonna be like, well, it would make sense to, because you be the rat. Down. We, you be the rat. And we be the Ninja Turtles. Ah, uh, well, yeah, good point. Next I don't know which one. I, I would probably. I don't know which one. Would be. Next cereal box here now. This I is the fucking rabbit. I was like, I'm like, fuck you, kids. How you get started eating the bowl? You smash the bowl with <laughs> your fucking heads. Is <laughs> one of my. I think I gave this one an eight plus. Believe it or not, I think I did. Was it? This, <laughs> is, this, is, this is one of my favorite cereals. That there. is a great cereal. Gary, I, say it. This is very. <laughs> Come on, how Go are you, on. How, listen, how is anyone gonna know if they're just gonna listen? You can't like, bring that up without saying it. Yeah, exactly. They can watch it, they can watch it. No, 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 listen. No, 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 Listen, listen. Gary, you do it. If someone is listening through a primary audio um experience, they have to know what you're looking at. But the thing is, the show can't, no, nothing. No, 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 no. You're not getting away with this. You're saying that damn name. It's not on iTunes. It's not on Apple. Not a, not a That's what happens I don't there. give a shit. Gary, you are saying Gary, it. Listen, listen people... to your boo boo above me, if anything. <laughs> no, Nutter Butter. That's what he calls his wet dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, right. say it. Well, that's actually a good thing because I love peanut butter. So there you go. It's a peanut butter. It. Listen, <laughs> listen. Remember, auditory experience. This cereal alone. This cereal that is formerly known <laughs> as. <laughs> the art is formerly known, known as, as butter. Gary? Mr. Butter. The cereal delicious. I think butter it's good. Butter is That's me. He's just <laughs> fucking stalling at this point. Delicious. Turn the goddamn fucking title box. It's nothing but a blast of peanut butter. <laughs> peanut butter. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come How on! People gonna know Come what you're on. talking about? It could be peanut butter. They maybe think you're thinking of Reese's. <laughs> Reese's. It's like me saying, "Uh, honey buzzers." <laughs> Come on! Come on! Nutter butter! Nutter butter! Will you buzz the nut? She keeps sucking while massaging your nuts. <laughs> Come on! It's not that hard. <laughs> Nutter butter. <laughs> Thank you. Is your underwear too tight? <laughs> <laughs> now everyone knows what you're talking about. It is not a butter! Not a butter! Oh. oh my god. Next year we got here. <laughs> not a butter is a droopy doopy. This goes a lot like a normal. Next year we got here. Okay. Doug Flutie. Oh my god. Fl uh, Flutie fl Flakes. Yeah. 
Revamp Flutie, he, yep, quarterback. Revamp Flutie Flakes. I I actually didn't really eat the cereal. My old man ate the cereal. <laughs> he said it was dry as hell. <laughs> Is it like a uh, bread flake or some shit? Kind of like that, but I got the box. It is the 20th anniversary of Doug Flutie Jr.'s foundation for all of them. So, very Oh, nice. my God. Oh. Gary, if you say that, uh, oh, my God. Okay. Jose says, nutter butter soggy bottoms. No, thank you. You already got <laughs> No. Nah, no, you don't have to say that. You don't have to say Ty- that. Tyler says, hey, yeah, it tastes just like Doug Flutie. <laughs> uh, I see one of them. What the fuck? Let's go over the one. <laughs> No, Gary. No, you go to the other one. I saw right, what you're wait. about to pull up. Which one's that one? The one on the the middle. No, the no, one, the no, one, the one in his hand right now. You save the best. <gasps> save the best for last. Save the best that's for last. The greatest, that's the greatest fucking cereal ever. Oh, right, that, oh, that ain't Captain Crunch. Okay, this, this one asterisks Captain Crunch. Why like Captain you Crunch. Seven post Crunch box. This to me is one of my all time favorites. It's up there with. It's the greatest fucking cereal ever. I think it's absolutely amazing. This is an A plus plus cereal all yeah, I the think, way. No, that's an S cereal. I think Captain Crunch is up there too with it. Be... Wait, wait, wait! <laughs> Look at the <laughs> Look at the fucking. <laughs> well then, you know, there's only like pictures in there. Look, let's look at. <laughs> Why do those little fuckers look so good? <laughs> The- it's like that second they- sausage part. We're going to the great beyond before okay, I'm about to you get eaten. You know what they look like? You ever play Super Mario World? You know those little, uh, those tiny thwomps that they bounce around? That's what oh, they look oh, like. Yeah. They're a cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> look at that one with his tongue hanging out. <laughs> so yeah, that cereal alone is, fu- is this cereal right here. It's one of the greatest cereals I've ever had. It now. is the greatest cereal. <laughs> I have another cinnamon toast crunch box as well. This one right here was the family size one. I don't think they sell with this particular format anymore because they changed it to this one. You got this one here. Uh, I always, yeah okay. Look at him. Look at that one, dude. Look, I saw that motherfucker. I saw that motherfucker. He's just like this. He looks down. He's just like. Speaking of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Oh my, oh my god! Look at that shit! Look at these motherfuckers like Yeah, they're all happy because they turned Chef Wendell into cinnamon shit! Yeah, this fucker here is like <laughs> What the hell happened to <laughs> Chef Wendell? I don't know, they decided to replace these <laughs> stupid goofy ass faces. Fucking hell, I missed Chef Wendell in boxes. I was just like, yeah, All Chef right, Wendell. final boxes. Hey, okay. Gary, do you have Cookie Crisp? I don't have my stash. Aww. Hey, what, what was that? What? That was the oh. one. Well, because remember how it used to be uh, 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 Chris the, the Hound? Now it's the Chris the Wolf. Here oh, we go. Oh. Next box we got here. I have to oh, say. no. I had to save this one because this to me is the best. This is out of all of them. This is the best is. cereal out of all of them. The blueberry. Yeah, I got I got the fucking family size one. Yeah, look at it. It's fucking blueberry. You gotta have blueberry, folks. This to me is the best. Fucking blueberry. You gotta love blueberry. This this is, is actually, look at that fucking face. <laughs> oh, dude, this is some Thank good you. shit, man. Booberry is so good. Yeah, no. hey Shane, fucking Booberry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I believe that's enough to stir a box. No. And then you got and Come then on. Gary. Huh? Cookie Crisp. I saw I saw some hot takes on Twitter about Cookie Crisp. By the way, some people were saying it was shit. I want I want to meet those people and take on my fat dick and smack the shit out of them with it. Cookie Crisp is excellent. Gary, what's that cereal that you have in your hand? Hey, what, what do you have, Gary? What do you have over there? <laughs> the oh, last Oreo! One. Oh, it's Oreo! Uh, Gary, come on, say it, say it. Oreo. 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 Oreo O's. Oreo what? Uh, no, no, come on, come on. Oreo O's. O- Oreo what? Oreo what? O's. What? 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 Oreo O's. What? 
Oreo O's. What? Oh! Oreo what? O's. Oh. Oh. No! Oreo no, what? Oreo O's. Oreo O's. Oreo what? What? Oreo O's. Come on. Where's that O face? Oreo O's. <laughs> 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 Gary, that box had a family. <laughs> Not anymore. It doesn't. <laughs> God damn it! That's a broken family now. <laughs> Quite literally, a broken family. Yeah. Good yeah. God Almighty, he's broken in half. <laughs> <laughs> watch out! Watch out! Watch out! <gasps> <laughs> okay, originally this box It was, was the vanilla version This was the golden Oreo O's <laughs> <laughs> You wanted that one mm -hmm. well, Okay, but let me say about Oreo O's This to me is always Has and will be my favorite cereal That is the I've other ever. cereal I gave an S to That it's cereal is crack. crack It's so good It is delicious, it is amazing It brings an amazing oh, Absolute delicate treat cookie to a cereal <laughs> Oh, oh. C.A. Cougar. I he doesn't like it? No, he says he says it was is it but disappointing. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> How dare you? It's one of the greatest fucking cereals ever. Dude, that okay, the, the problem with the cereal, it's kind of expensive and you go through it like it's nothing. Yeah. Okay, that's enough of the cereals. All right. I literally showcased all, well, almost all my bugs until until well, gold. Until, gold until? Goes. <laughs> oh, it's a little blurry, uh, Psycho Mike. <laughs> so I ended up. Uh, poor Oreo cereal. Hmm. Oh, That's the vanilla I, version too. That's even worse. Yeah, I, I tried the vanilla one. It's not bad. It's it's decent. I give it a, like a B. It's yeah, decent. It was, it was right. As for the or regular. Oh, wait, I don't. Even, I don't smoke at all. I fucking hate smoking. I despise it. As for the regular Oreos, I only gave two cereals an S, and that's that. And cinnamon toast crunch. That's it. That Captain oh, Crunch. No. How dare you, Captain? Oh. No. Peanut butter. God damn it, Shane. Peanut <laughs> butter Captain Crunch or Captain Crunch with berries. Oh, that Crunch berries. Yes, I do love Crunch that. berries. Anyway, is that all that we have for tonight? Reese's peanut butter yeah. puffs is an A plus. Alrighty. Huh? Huh? All right. What? Hmm. Hmm. He's trying to go bye bye or something. Unless Sano's got a sword for us. Um. Yeah, that's right. I. That's right. I forgot. Three time with Sano back. Yeah, it's actually some good shit this time around. Who would have thought? Yay. He takes out his dick and he goes whack. <laughs> oh, for God's sakes. The, these rumors are untrue and slanderous. <laughs> That's not true at all. That's not true Jesus Christ. Well, anyways. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> I was at, When you said that frog Curtis, I was looking for Lucas's comment, actually. <laughs> but I don't see him anywhere, so that's fine. <laughs> uh, anyhow, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and end the show off on a good note, uh, especially um, in memorandum of that poor, poor cereal box that had <laughs> just been horribly annihilated in front of it. Um, here lies Vanilla Oreo O's. Cause a live studio audience. <laughs> cause a death. Gare Bear's O face. <laughs> oh, indeed. <laughs> well, anyways. <laughs> so, yeah. So, with this whole situation that's been going on out in the big wide world out there, it's been kind of hard on everybody. And, you know, some things happen. And it's just, you know, people are a little stressed out. And, of course, if you are an essential worker like me, that means that more than likely you're going to run into people who are yeah, feeling understatement. more like the guy with the fucking biggest steel balls and guts to be able to do what he does. Uh, well, <laughs> there's a, there's another story, but that's another time for <laughs> That's that was like a possible kidnapping, but that's another story <laughs> for another day. Um, but anyways, um, 
I may just tell you guys off stream. <coughs> oh, anyhow, uh, so we had some good things happen to me though recently, because um, a lot of times I get to deal with people who are pretty just assholes. I mean, yeah, they're just really crappy and entitlement, especially entitlement. Yeah, it is a lot of entitlement. I, I dealt with a Karen recently, so that wasn't fun. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, so the good things that have happened, so. When all this stuff started going on and when uh, everything was starting to pop off back at around uh, March, uh, I had little to no protection, which sucks because, you know, I'm, I'm out there. I'm t- at that point, I wasn't handling driver's license. I'm like, no, man, I'm not touching that shit. I can't. You should have called the APA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was good. It was. <laughs> oh, says, who's Karen, Shane? It's not a who, but a what. Oh. oh. Yeah, you guys never heard of it. You guys <laughs> never heard... was like, ooh. <laughs> okay, Jim Sub says no protection. <laughs> Pull out. <laughs> Boy, trust me. If that was the case, I would. <laughs> I'd love to. Oh, yeah, I uh, wish it. Anyhow, all joking aside. Uh, so, essentially... Uh, I, I had basically had no protection, so I didn't have gloves. I didn't have a mask, you know. I didn't oh have all that stuff. God! And it, it really it blows. So, so uh, one of the residents uh, from where I uh, where I work at was very, very kind enough to donate a whole box of gloves from her workplace for me, and I'm still using them. By the way, I still have enough to get me by for a little while longer. It's really nice, and it just it just helps out, especially if I have to go shopping or if I have to um, uh, get gas for my car. I don't want to be touching pumps with my bare hands and such. You know, you don't want to be doing that. You gotta be safe. Oh no, you gotta be, you gotta be safe. Uh, so yeah, it is a big whole thing of uh, gloves. Uh, she just asked me what my hand size was. I'm like, I guess I'm a medium. I'm not entirely petite, but you know, I know what your hand size is. That's oh, creepy. For God's sakes. <laughs> I'm not gonna respond. Did you to that. did you get it like when I was sleeping or something? <laughs> what your hand size? Yeah, maybe. I want you. At least want, Shane, want... unlike you, Gary. At least Shane wasn't on those Burger King commercials. I got tiny hands. <laughs> oh my god! I want to eat this burger, but I got these tiny hands. <laughs> god, this commercial so fucking stupid. I love it. <laughs> anyway, so. The other oh, good thing, yeah, the only, the other, <laughs> He's mad the other, the other good thing that I had happen was that um, same resident as well too. Uh, apparently, McDonald's was doing this thing where they were giving out free food for uh, all essential workers out there for a little okay. time, and um, she was asking me if I knew about. It. I'm like, oh no, I heard nothing about it. So she was like telling me that I should go over there and show my badge, and I was like, eh, we'll see what happens. But I, I, I forgot to do it. Just because, like, I was so tired, I didn't want to go out to any place, especially since now having to get th- things from like stores and fast food joints. Now it's a pain in the ass. Oh, because I gotta put on a mask and everything. I got yeah. this whole, I got this whole twelve step fucking process. Yeah. Make sure you got hand sanitizer. Make sure you touch right thing. Oh, yeah, 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 pain in exactly. the ass, dude. It really is. So I forgot to do it as well too. So there was also that. Um, but next next night after she told me this, she came by and. Lo and behold, it was a Happy Meal box. (laughs) (laughs) And she was saying, it's not actually a Happy Meal. It's actually um, it's actually a double cheeseburger in there. Like, look, I'm already happy. It's fine. (laughs) That's a happy ending. (laughs) Yeah, it was really nice. So then the last thing that just happened to me about Thursday, not Thursday. I'm sorry. Sunday, Sunday night. uh, I had. Uh, a resident I hadn't seen in a long time, uh, face to face, and she gave me a f- full bottle of Mountain Dew. Cause she was nice. like, "I was just, I was just out at the store. I was really thirsty, and I I got got a little bit too much. You want the bottle?" I was like, "Sure, <laughs> I'll take it." <laughs> so I, Shit, yeah. So I it was um, I was treated with some uh, one of the, not one of those like regular bottles too. It was like one of those twenty ounce ones, you know? Oh wow, so, the like, bigger the, ones. Okay, yeah, the bigger ones. So. Um, I saved that for uh, yesterday because I didn't. I had a few drinks already for um, while at work just to help with me for like caffeine and such. Um, so that was really nice. So 
my point being is that, like, you know, I know things seem kind of shitty at times, but, like, trust me, there's some really good people out there. You just have yeah. to, you just kind of have to take a look around. Um, I, knew I was, uh, oh, God. Was that a quote from Mr. Rogers? For Rogers? I'm trying to remember if it was if it said, um, if he said, um, find the helpers. I don't or know. look for the helper or something like that. I, I forgot. There's, it's a really nice quote for whenever you feel like uh, people are just super shitty. It's just, you know, just look for the helpers, man. So, um, yeah, just, you know, a little, little positivity. Just yeah. sometimes it comes out of nowhere. And from the, when you least expect it, especially after the shit fucking week I had, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one little bottle of Mountain Dew went a very long way. Maybe want- also maybe also piss like a racehorse, but that's another story <laughs> for another day. <laughs> you know, what is it I, what is it I, there's one thing I always say. I said it earlier. It's the little things in life that make a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. Shut up, phone. <laughs> no, you stop that. <laughs> Sorry, that's my um, that's my alarm. Um, actually, I have my alarm's name. Do you want to hear them? Oh God, yes. Okay, so I have um. Okay, let's see. First, I have for my first alarm that I have. I have like um, I have four different ones, right? <laughs> well, are they backups in case the first one doesn't wake you up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my first alarm is wake up sunshine with a little heart emoji on it. Um, okay. Then the second one is okay. Let's go, please. Then the third one says no. Seriously, get up. <laughs> and then the last one says get to work, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my alarms, and that Shit, get off the pot. <laughs> yeah, so that that last alarm was um, wake up sunshine. <laughs> it's cool. almost like my phone's talking to me. <laughs> All right, <laughs> but anyhow, so I just wanted to leave a little positivity for you guys because yeah. I, th- I know things have been kind of rough for. All of us in the oh, situation. Some people in the now. chat are saying copyright infringement. <laughs> Actually, no. That's I'm pretty sure that's a um, that's normal. That's like one of those stock things you get. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well, Mr. Gare Bear. What? Send us off. Good. Yeah. Uh, fuck everybody. Good night. <laughs> wow. Hello, guys. Half ass. Um, <laughs> ending. Jeez. I am anti Thank you all so much for tuning in for another episode. And by the way, a little preview for what's to come this week. Um, review for a classic that came out in the 90s, an anime and movie. A review for Spec Ops, the line, a full-on video review. And this Sunday, the three of us will be will be live streaming on my channel our the best games. Us. for the th- Well, me and the three, wow, the three of you. Fucking I, I meant the four oh, of us. Oh, now you're on my bad side tonight. Busted! What a... <laughs> Austin, what is it with you in fucking math? I told you I'm a D student in math, dude. Um, D's and dumb shit. Yeah, no kidding. I, I t- <laughs> well, Gary, when are when are you when are you not mean to me? Anyways, um, oh, the past three days I was actually quite- you actually you have been very nice to me. No, I'm the one that's being mean to Gary. Yeah. So look out for the four of us. We'll be still streaming on my channel <laughs> our best games <laughs> of the decade. And otherwise, thank you so much. All right, well, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of this motherfucker. Hey, you guys, Shane O'Mac. Yeah. Um. <laughs> fucking dipstick. <laughs> uh. Well, I. Hmm. You should that's... be thinking with your dipstick. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> oh. You should be thinking with your dipstick, Lottie. Oh, Lottie. Be thinking with your dipstick. Those God, fucking, fucking commercials, commercials so stupid. They're God, these little commercials are so fucking dumb, but I can't help but love them. All right, anyhow, uh, I got nothing. I'm sorry. This was more anticlimactic than The Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All All right. Right. It's the worst ending than Dexter. <laughs> Don't even give me a shot on Dexter. Uh, anyways, Romy. <laughs> Don't do it like you did last week, you asshole. But I do. What do you mean when they cut it out in mid cent? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for everyone for tuning into episode 120 of the Bowl Fuss on the Sofas with a, uh, a new record of 33 viewers watching at once. That's a new record, yay! 33. That's the amount of IQ points Gary has. So until then, stay tuned. 
I'm sorry, were you talking? Because I wasn't listening. Stay tuned. And once again, motherfuck Billy Mitchell and his bitch ass. Like I said, stick to your fucking hot sauce. Because Pac-Man ain't had nothing your bullshit. Now, if you excuse me, uh, speaking of Rule 34, I'm going to look up some Rule 34 Futanari porn starring Miranda Lawson. <gasps> Good night, everybody. I don't know. You're going to say that. <laughs>